Are with you prepared you? to call is Hamas possible, a terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, discussion can you? with you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry. We can agree on that. I was getting used to my show what just happened being on talk tv every friday night at 10 30. they go and change it i'm furious they've moved it to 8 30 every friday talk tv what just happened i am furious well we are back lois is here lois how are you i'm very well how are you i'm really really great simply because if you call 0344 499 1000 you get through to lois's son and you can <laughs> uh, hurl as much abuse at him as you like his name's richard he's not very good at his job but he did get it as a result of nepotism you've got to stop doing this you're going to destroy his confidence what the hell is he doing what are you i don't doing? care about his confidence well, you should. no i don't why, why should i care about his confidence anyway i thought we were going on the wagon you said that it's lasted 24 hours no, I, I'm not drinking for the full year. Right, OK, well, I'll do it with you, then. Well, you do it on your own. Right, I'm not... Well, what are you mean to not... me? You've only just started. You've already been mean to me, for God's sake. I'm not getting involved. <laughs> I'm not getting involved. OK. I'm not going to any of your meetings. <laughs> no, 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 neither am I. So that's... <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice thought, though, wasn't it? No, it was not a nice oh, thought. Okay. Let's, 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 do, let's do therapy together. No, let's just not have a beer. Right, that's it. That'll be the easier, that'll be the easier of the two the options. Easier said than done. Anyway, uh, immigration is clearly a complete disaster in the United Kingdom. The Home Office have completely mucked things up. The UK Border Force have mucked things <clears> up. And we've now discovered in the mail, the, the Daily Mail, that... Pa passports have been stamped with right to stay forever stamps that the Home Office doesn't know anything about. And so people have been given indefinite leave to remain, maybe even thousands of them, even though the Home Office doesn't understand how that took place. Well, I think we've got a significant problem here with immigration. One of the big problems, of course, is the fact that EU nationals are no longer allowed to live and work in the United Kingdom. They're only allowed to come on holiday. Don't worry about that. Just fly to Dublin and get on the internal flights or indeed a train to Belfast and you'll be perfectly tickety-boo. You know something? In the Irish Republic, 42% of national insurance numbers issued in the past 15 years are to people who were not born in the Irish Republic. Now, if you believe that 42% of the working population of the Irish Republic are foreign, then you're wrong. What's actually happened is they've all moved to the United Kingdom. Our borders are porous and the reason is, in reality, because of the of big business pressure on the Conservative Party and, of course, the Labour Party's desire to change the country. Thankfully, most of you didn't watch uh, the fireworks last night, but let's be honest, it was all about pro-immigration, pro-multiculturalism, pro-diversity. Absolutely unbelievable from Sadiq Khan. And by the way, if Sadiq Khan ever becomes British Prime Minister, which is possible, the first thing that he'll do is throw the doors open to unlimited immigration. And the second thing he'll do is order an unprecedented crackdown on free speech to mm. ensure that anybody who mm. opposes his policies is locked up in jail. The laws exist to do it already. All they'll do is redefine anti-immigration as a hate crime and make immigrants a protected group and therefore criticism of them will become a criminal offence in of itself lest we forget the way that insulting the prophet muhammad peace be upon him and indeed the uh, burning the quran became criminal offences in of their own right because suddenly the way that hate crime legislation gets amended included insulting the islamic prophet and indeed burning the quran now i don't want to insult the prophet muhammad which is why i was so respectful to him just a second ago and indeed i don't want to burn the quran but the way that islamic blasphemy law has now been integrated into british law i think is extremely worrying uh, blasphemy is something that caused significant problems problems in the United Kingdom when we weren't able to criticise the Catholic Church. Remember the Reformation? We appear to be going backwards. Well, now 
we have a huge number of migrants coming to the country who are, who are going to enjoy protected status, egged on by people in big business, egged on by people in the Labour Party, egged on unbelievably by the trade unions. You know something? <laughs> there wasn't a great deal going for the north of England where I come from, but what it did have was a very strong, skilled working class that did well for themselves financially. That has been destroyed by the Labour Party and unbelievable that they should be so supportive of it. So my prayer for 2024 is, first of all, keep up the non-boozing. Believe me, the champagne bill was getting out of control <laughs> and, and, and her bill for vodka, believe me, would have sunk the Belarusian economy. But, uh, <laughs> don't drink vodka, do you? It's hilarious. <laughs> no, actually, the amount I drank, I could, if I give up drinking this year, I can personally find that's Britain's independent nuclear detail. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, my prayer beyond not drinking for this year is that we're going to get a control of immigration the only way we're going to do it is my big pledge to you or my big beg to you make sure you vote in the general election what they're hoping for is a low turnout where both political parties say well we're awful but the other side's worse i think what you've got to do is vote with your conscience at the next election this is a major opportunity to for a realignment in british politics and we need to do it because as we stand here today there are thousands tens of thousands of foreign criminals in the country. We are about to receive an invasion of all those women and children on small boats coming over from Calais. Oh, sorry, they're not women and children. They're all military-aged men. We've got that invasion. We've also got the problem with EU nationals still pouring into the country. And, of course, we've got the issue that none of the major political parties care about this problem. They want to see your wages undercut. They want to see the benefits bill go out of control so you're all pandering to the state and they want to change the nature of this country because they know that you cannot allow President Xi of China to win if you have a strong Anglosphere. And when Donald Trump gets elected in the United States of America, if Britain is still a strong, free, independent nation that believes in the principles of freedom, free speech and property law, then we will be able to rise again as a people, as an Anglosphere, and take down all the evil demagogues that are destroying this world. Lois, your thoughts? Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I think that this is the year where we show why everyone speaks English in the world, why we've defined, why we're the mother of all parliaments, why everyone looks to us. The mother effer of all parliaments. <laughs> there's a reason. There's a reason why, the, if you believe, there's a globalist agenda. There's a reason why England and the United Kingdom is seen as so important. It's because everyone looks to us, because it started with us and they want it to end with us, but we're not going to allow that to you happen. Can, you cannot, the bad guys cannot win unless you first smash the United Kingdom. That is the aim of people like Sadiq Khan. That is the aim of people like Keir Starmer. That's definitely the aim of Jeremy Corbyn. By the way, I love the way that Piers Morgan <laughs> interviewed him. First two questions, are Hamas terrorists and do you want them removed? And in fact, Jeremy Corbyn was unable to answer. Let me tell you something, Jeremy. I have never even been to the funeral of a terrorist, let alone was I present but not involved. What a load of old bunker. But that evil old man almost became the British Prime Minister. That is the state that we're in. Anyway, we're joined by two guest co-hosts this evening, Josh Rom, entertainment correspondent from The Sun, and Charlie Sansom, who's never had a proper job in his life. <laughs> well, happy new year to you too. Two fine examples of manhood, aren't we lucky? Yeah, I mean, I, I reckon... <laughs> I reckon, like, oh, yes, I'm, I'm definitely fine. What, 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 you know what? If if what? we were to average out the weight in this room, <laughs> you, you'd be fur porky. Thanks a lot. <laughs> so, Charlie, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah. Do you, did you have a good Christmas? I did. What did you nice. get up to? Do you know what? I chill out at Christmas. I don't do too much. I'm actually quite a Grinch. Is that because everybody else does Christmas for you, Charlie? I mean, I do like being waited on, yeah. Yeah, see? Yeah. see? What, what sort of activities do they... Well, it's none of my business. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> you know what, Chris... Oh, ding, ding, he's getting started. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, Christmas stays with the family, but then after that, I kind of just... You know, just chill. I reflect on the year. I don't do. No, the... you don't. You no, get no, 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 I do. no, I don't. I've stopped drinking completely. <laughs> Have you? Have you? Yeah, oh yeah. my God! We're the... You're the only one. I'm the only one. Yeah. 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 For now. The, uh, for I, now. I stopped drinking before New Year's. Oh, good for you. You know your party, Christmas party. What was that? Was that the thing that ended it for I you? I was like, look, <laughs> look at all these wallies. I can't be bothered. Are I'm you done. Drinking at the no, party? I didn't drink at the party. No. Oh, okay. No, good for no. you. Well, let me tell you, I woke up at her place after the party. After and 36 I, hours. And had to go straight to work. Wow. <laughs> Stamina. I was like, oh my god. No, no, we didn't. We woke up briefly, then had another drink, and then you went back to sleep again. Then you went to work. 
and then somebody went that, that pizza we ordered two hours ago what happened to it <laughs> we went outside it was on the street right, on the step outside the house and we went oh that'll be all right just reheat it a very good oh. friend of mine is a lot older than me so he very diplomatically said Lois, do you think these 36 hour parties at your flat are a very good idea? <laughs> it's like, um, uh, maybe not, I don't know. I mean, me, me and Josh are wondering why we've not been invited to these parties, aren't we? So, yeah. Well, you know, yeah, well, 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 well in Josh, in Josh, we should boycott the show Josh's now. Case, <laughs> in Josh's case, it's because he's a frigging entertainment correspondent of the sun. In yeah, we can't have you there. We can't have you there. I mean, I'm, I'm game for everything. Why not? Why not? Well, yeah, but, it, you know, Chatham House rules means nothing. The mirror has pro proved that, hasn't it, Andre, it the has. other day? Yeah. Yes. Let, yeah. Listen, if it's a party with names, I'm there. Doesn't matter what sort of name. <laughs> Literally, so, more so, and more. What anyone's so, name. So he, he won't come to our party then because we're all no marks, so that's oh, what it is. Oh, for goodness yeah. sake. He there did come to our party. And there are plenty of celebrities. Hey, Joe, he did. did. You, you are, you are no correct. He did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And can I just say, there are plenty of celebrities out there that will, not naming any names, that will go to the opening of an envelope. <laughs> Hi, Lizzie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, love you, Lizzie. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. To be uh, fair to her, she has always, she's always, that's been her reputation. Like, I will never oh. forget being in the audience of Big Brother's Bits and the Side and Rylan Clark literally introduced her as the woman that goes to the opening of the em of I an envelope. What, though, it's Lizzie. And then she did this whole big strut down the I'll stairs. So so she owns it, to be she's fair. She's one of the most connected women after me that I've ever met. After. <laughs> after. 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 Okay. Okay. Nice joke. She's slightly more connected. I love, I love Lizzie, bless. Mm. But Why? lots of talking points tonight. <laughs> Why? Why do you love Lizzie? Because she's Lizzie Cundy. She's a legend. How old do you reckon she is on average? Oh my god! But you can't I'm ask me this. this. You can't ask a woman on average. You can't ask someone of an also, age on average. You can't ask a woman her age on. No, but I'm not asking. I'm not asking. I'm not asking how old the original parts of her are. Oh. I'm asking. Oh. How old. <laughs> yeah, this is getting a bit dodgy. I've been 27 right for 15 years, and I, and I think if that doesn't deserve a call to the National Geographic, nothing does. But, 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 but Lois, there are parts of there are parts of you that are no more than six months old, right? That's in fact, true. In fact, which that's part? true. Oh, I'll tell you. oh we're well, going there tonight. Enough. We're going there. Are we allowing... Are boys in there? Can you boys behave, please? It's, it's a new year. We might as well start as we mean to go on. I mean, her cheekbones hey, are older than her son. Are you younger than her son. <laughs> My cheekbones are actually real. Are they? Yeah, they how are. How much of you is real and how much is fake? No, it's all real. It might have been hoisted up a bit, but most of it's real. <laughs> she's, been hoist, she's been hoisted up that far. She'll soon have a beard. <laughs> no, I wouldn't, actually. Well, can we stop this now, please? Honestly. Honestly. <laughs> That is a disgrace. Well, I don't that. want to talk to you anymore. Happy New Year, Lois. Right, come Happy on. Happy New Year, everyone. Yeah. Quite OK, quite, yeah. what, what are we talking about tonight? We're going to talk about mm. uh, the Fairfield UK campaign and the fact that Steve Calm has done so much damage to the roads in London. We're also going to be talking about uh, UKIP. They're going, to, they're going to make a major push in the new year. We're going to talk no, about reform. all of this immigration oh. policy that we've got a real problem with. Look, on a serious note, Charlie, immigration, it's completely out of control. Is Nigel Farage the man to save Britain? No. Why not? He had his moment a few years ago, I think, and I say that respectfully. If, if Nigel had stuck around after the Brexit referendum and not jumped ship when UKIP started to semi-implode around the Gerard Batten era, um, I actually think there would have been more momentum now. Really? It, yeah, definitely. I think that people like Nigel because he's a likeable guy, and he's very likeable. I, like, I like him. I think yeah. he's a great man. However, he lost steam by bolting with Cameron and everyone else that quit their jobs well, around the referendum. Well, he wanted to get so, Brexit done, didn't he, to be fair? Then and why leave? You can't... You can't look, let's be well, fair. Be, you can't trust the Conservative Party to fulfil an agenda which they did not themselves support in the referendum in the first place. Yeah, well. So these are all points, and, and I can continually make the point that you're the firmer, former chairman of the Essex Conservative Party, yep. which, whilst people don't think of these area chairmanships being very important, I mean, that is a significant area, and you resigned yeah. from the Conservative Party. Uh, people probably know this, but why and when? Well, it wasn't because of Brexit. No, no. no. Um, it was because of the handling of COVID. Yeah, and you the had way principles that yeah, I respect. Yeah, I didn't yeah, agree with the, the government mandating vaccines and telling people that they need a vaccine passport and trying to implement those kind of plans. No, no. I know it didn't go that far, but I know there were lots of talks yeah. about it. And they a lot wanted of MPs that, didn't lied they? to me yeah. about it. Yeah, they wanted it. And MPs lied to me, to my face, and said, it's all a rumour, it's all going to be 
you know, out with, you know. But it's because of people like you that maybe it didn't go through. It's not, things don't maybe, happen in a vacuum. Maybe. You know? I mean, I think people, they wanted it to happen. People remember my resignation. They don't necessarily remember me personally, but they, they remember the yeah, story. They, remember, they forget yeah. you, too. They remember oh, you residing no. on the BBC. <laughs> yeah. Did you tear up your membership card? No, no, because the, I, they used to give them in plastic when I was a member. So you should have got some scissors. They, oh, they right. did give me a new one, which was like a certificate, which was, you know, faux yeah. signed by Boris Johnson, but that one just... That's going in a box. And, a, and we're going to go to Saeed in London in a second. But, Josh, I want to ask you about mm. Nigel Farage because, obviously, he's been in I'm a Celebrity. Is that something mm. that you think will turbocharge his political ambitions? Well, I'm not sure. I, I think it comes down to a couple of points. Firstly, the Conservative Party at the moment, they don't know who they are or what they stand for. Nigel has always been, you can say whatever you like about Nigel, <coughs> he's, he's always consistent. been a very principled and very consistent man when it comes to his viewpoints. He went on I'm a celebrity with a purpose for a reason he wanted to reach a broader church not just the kind of fan base of the quote insurgent channel that he may may be on at the moment we refer to it as the other place the other yeah, place the, the, the hellhole as i pr personally prefer oh, no, to refer no, to no, it no, no. Um, anyway anyway but regardless of that so, listen, sorry sorry weren't you their entertainment correspondent for a while <laughs> and now you're not yeah. <laughs> I was talk radio's entertainment correspondent first, Andre. OK. Mm. Oh, so you, so you jump was... ship and then you come back again? I'm not saying wow. that. He refers the honourable member to the, to the answer he gave some I plead the ago. fifth. I plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, regardless of that, going back to Nigel, we have digressed. I think, listen, he went on I'm a Celebrity to reach a broader church. Yes. And also... To, to give people an idea into his actual character, he's been demonised so mm, much in yes. the media. But actually, Do you think it worked, Josh? Partially works. But okay. the thing is, when he, if and when he goes back into politics, of course, the other side will continue that demonisation yes. of him all over again. You know, we... we you we could we're going to do that anyway. Uh, but you? the thing is, we, yeah. we see this all the time in elections. You know, Republican politicians, before Hillary Clinton chose to run for president in 2016, they're all going, yeah, she's great for our country. She's been a great first lady standing up for women's rights. The moment she beat Bernie Sanders, or even not before she beat you, Bernie Sanders... You misspoke Sanders, there, you meant Democrats. Yeah, th no, but no, the Republican politicians, Ted Cruz was oh, on really? camera, oh, okay. on camera praising Hillary Clinton. A lot well, of the Republicans... That should have told them something, shouldn't it? Mm. But the whole, a lot of the Republicans, especially in in in, in the Senate, knowing her and knowing a sen knowing her in the Senate, knowing what yeah, she did, yeah. especially for New York after 9-11, they had nothing but praise for her until she decided Worst properly politics. to run for president and she was going to get that uh, Democratic nomination in 2016. And the moment she did that, boom, the floodgates opened, right. the demonisation started, and her opinion polls went straight but, but, down, but more, the emails, controversy... But, I, but, but, but Josh, I saw more selfies from Conservative Party conference of activists with Nigel Farage yeah. and with Rishi yeah. Sunak. Yeah. 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 And, and this is the whole yeah. point. He was a superstar at conference, He was an he? absolute superstar at conference. And this is this is the thing. I think the Conservative Party are, are kind of... They, they It's very clear that they, they, they know they're going to lose the general election. So Absolutely, they're looking yeah. towards the future. And in a way, I think... The way Jeremy Corbyn took the Labour Party to the far left, I think Nigel Farage, if he was... I mean, it's very clear that a lot of the Conservative Party membership want to welcome him back into the party. Oh, right. So so I think Nigel, in, in especially right now, they're looking for a real prominent voice, a real leader that can drive the party into a vision because they don't know well, who they are or what they stand for. And Nigel, and Nigel could be Wednesday. that person. Mm. That, and that's the, that's the thing. And Can I ask you a question, Josh? Do you think Nigel wants to do real political, wants to have a real political impact, sorry, or do you think he wants to be liked? I don't think he's ever wanted to be liked. No, I he think he's care he's about he's that. been a prince. Say what you like about Jeremy Corbyn. I can say a you load of stuff about Jeremy Corbyn. Jeremy. But Jeremy Corbyn has always been in himself a principled man with his own beliefs. Mm -hmm. Whether or not his beliefs are tolerable, that's a different question. But Nigel is the same in that regard. He's always been principled about his beliefs. He's never necessarily wanted to also, be liked. He's wanted also, to be liked by his by his core mm, fan base. Mm, mm, but also. the wider British public that's the also also that they live have. they live in a world where people like them right you know if, you, if you're a metal trader from the city of london and you hold the views of nigel farage you're not gonna people are not gonna walk up to you and have a go at you are they anyway saeed is in london saeed you're on talk tv 
Yes, uh, hello. Uh-huh. Hi there. Uh, look, I'm, I have a different view from, I guess, most of the panel. I Go think for it. there is a uh, sort of quite a aggressive scapegoating of uh, refugees and immigrants, mm-hmm. which is unfortunately, look, we need uh, immigrants because we have massive labor shortages. We have large number of uh, sort of uh, unfilled jobs in the NHS in other critical areas. We have been paying our doctors and nurses so little for years and years. That, uh, isn't the they, problem, but side isn't yeah. the problem that we've created a slave wage culture. So what we do is we turn around and we say, well, we need people, um, we need people on low pay in order to work in certain warehouses and on certain delivery companies. Yeah. But of course, what we'll do is we'll bring in labour from abroad cheap, and then we'll give them in work benefits, then we'll give them housing benefits, and in the end, it doesn't end up cheap because what we do is we pay our own people to sit on the dole, and then we pay foreigners to do the jobs they won't do because they're so badly paid. It's crazy. No, I, look, I agree, but how many of the people on this panel agree that doctors and nurses should get a significant pay increase? Well, I'll tell you what I would say to you, Saeed. I'll tell you what I would say, Saeed. 20%. I'll tell you what yes. I would say, Side. The problem that we've got with the NHS is consultants are plainly massively overpaid. GPs are plainly massively overpaid. Mm. You know, 120,000 a year for a GP in Northern England is ludicrous. 80,000 would be perfectly sufficient. What we've done is the BMA have successfully lobbied to have some of the profession massively overpaid, mm. and that has been at the expense of others. I think nurses are underpaid and GPs are overpaid. Right. And junior doctors, I mean, where... How junior doctors they, I mean, should get a pay rise. Yeah. So what about agency, agency staff? Because if you're an agency staff worker for the NHS, yep. you're a nurse or a doctor, you come in as a locum. And you get perhaps, paid a lot more. You'll get paid maybe double, three, four uh, times as much as you would if you were employed more. directly yeah. by the NHS. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Said, Said, yeah. Said, yeah. I, I, do you have knowledge of the NHS? Have you ever worked in the NHS? No, I haven't worked in the NHS, but I've uh, had experience with them uh, because of family illness yes. in the past couple of years. And they, look, they did a phenomenal job, yes. but they were so overworked that you really worry about it. But do you not think uh, that uh, might be to do with the organisation of the NHS? NHS oh, that I'll it's say, too big, too uh, unwieldy, think, it's not to do with pay? What do you think about that? I think a lot of it is just sheer un- uh, number of, uh, sort of amount of understaffing because they just don't have enough... But, isn't, but say it isn't part of the problem, and this is the thing that frustrates me massively, we're one yeah. of the only countries in the world where the vast majority of our qualified medical practitioners are doling out penicillin to children in the community, right? We, yeah. need to get, we need to get those GPs out of the community and into the hospitals, and we need to put the nurses into the community doing the community work. But the reality is, because you train for eight years as a doctor, you want a cushy yeah. number afterwards. It's utterly yeah. mad, utter, utter madness. And I'll tell you something else that's crazy. BMA, that dodgy trade union, which doesn't like to admit it's a trade union, which, by the way, represents the largest number of private sector healthcare providers probably in the world, because every single GP is a private sector healthcare company. <gasps> Don't tell them that. Um, but 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 they but they have they re- refuse to allow nurses to undertake certain activities, certain drugs, uh, prescribing them certain uh, injections mm. and whatever. So what that means is the nurses in the hospital who are only there because the GPs insist on being in the community doing very little actual medical work, they can diagnose the patients, but they're not allowed to give them any treatment. So instead, junior doctors, who by the way have a stupid name because they're hospital doctors, Mm. are running round the entire bloody place. All they're doing is going to the nurse, what should I do now? Doing it and running on. The stand of care is being undermined. But but what we should do, I'll tell you what we should do, let's outlaw the British Medical Association. Let's make it a criminal (laughs) offence for doctors to join a trade union in the same way as it's illegal for the police to join a trade union. Have that, BMA. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> no, I think there might be some efficiencies in the system by rejigging what a GP can do versus what a uh, junior doctor can do and what a nurse can do. But I think what is very clear is that under 13 years of Tory rule, the number of doctors per capita, the number of hospital beds, mm. all sorts of our services have declined, and they are much below. Yeah, but, yeah, but if you yeah, yeah, but if you think about it, the big problem the big problem was that Gordon Brown ruined the economy. I mean, if you think about it, Gordon Brown... This is a global your average, financial no, crisis. No, your average, your average side, side, listen, your, av- your average 10-year-old would be able to explain why Gordon Brown's policy of perpetual boom, the perpetual boom theory, was mm. nonsense. What mm. Gordon Brown believed was if you create an economic boom through real economics and you borrow money and stoke it with government debt, you can create a perpetual boom, right? Anybody will tell you that the bust was just going to be bigger when it came. Anyway, more next. Debt has- We're here! 
Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about Talk Today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Bravman. She's heading up one side and Rishi soon at the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. For the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilch. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds, so far result, nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on Talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass, <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you should have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walks into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. He's on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares oh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing interviews. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm you're, going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Are you prepared to call is Hamas a have, terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you discussion can't, can't you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry. We can agree on that. Flashed up on the telly with me going like that. <laughs> by, by the way, Lois, Lois, I just want to ask you a question. What? I did my own makeup tonight. What do you think? I think you look beautiful. Oh, we're going to Barbados. Like Liberace. <laughs> <laughs> I literally, I literally, so, oh, did I say it out loud? Oh, my God, she uh, said it out loud. So, they, so they, they keep saying to me that I'm not dark enough, so I went to the bit that they used for JJ Anasobi and just powered it all off. OK, moving swiftly on, um, what are we talking about tonight, Andre? OK, uh, right. what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a number of... By the way, I just want to say there's a number of embargoes that are coming in uh, at 11 o'clock and 12 o'clock, some really, really interesting stories that we can't talk to you about until then. Let's put them to one side. But we are talking about the situation that's arisen in the UK with all of the issues with uh, driving and all of the issues with the congestion charge. And, uh, and I'm joined now, I think, by Howard Cox from Fair Fuel UK. Howard, how are you? I'm all right, I'm Andre, but I can't see you. Cox for London. <laughs> yes, that's me. You, got me. you, you can see me. Hello, Louise. How are you? Hello, darling. See you tomorrow. Oh, Why yes, that's right. Yeah. Can't tell everyone. <laughs> You're seeing him tomorrow as well. OK, so Sadiq Khan has... Um, has come up with a whole heap of policies this year. I want to talk, first of all, I don't know if you saw the um, the fireworks display, which was yes. all about multiculturalism, mm. all about pro-immigration. You know, it was like, oh, you know, the only quote from the king was, we need a diverse society. <laughs> you know, you think, oh, for goodness sake. But Sadiq Khan every year rams home a political message with the fireworks. Uh, you know my view, and I appreciate that you're running for Mayor of London, but I just abolished the job. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it'd be, it'd be interesting on the first day when I'm elected, getting there and say, right, guys, pack up, we're going home. That's it. 
um, I'd, I'd, I'd love to do that. What, what a headline that would be. But I mean, he was talking about climate change yesterday and, uh, uh, you know, an empire wind rush or you know, whatever. It was just yeah, through. Yeah. We were the only celebration in the world that actually politicised uh, the yeah. event. Apart no one from else communist did. China. Yeah. Well, I think I think well, that's that's expected, Lois, isn't it? Uh, but the point is, you know, when you look at Australia, New Zealand, Indonesia, going away, all the way over to America, everyone was actually just doing it for enjoyment and the optimism. But it reminds me. But, but it reminds me. It reminds me of the opening of the London 2012 Olympics, where Danny Boyle delivered something that I can understand why Alistair Campbell and Tony Blair said that they cried because it wasn't a history of Britain. It was a history of the British Labour and Trade Union movement. Yeah. Which, yes. which you think to yourself, well. Well, hang on a second. How factional Living is that? At the, I mean, the if, I, if, I'd, if I'd done a history of British conservatism as the <laughs> opening, people would have gone mad with, you know, an effigy of Nigel Farage <laughs> liberating us from Brussels. And a Gerald Scarf Thatcher or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, well that, that's the point. Labour seems to be, or the, the left wing side of our politics seems to be immune with criticism. Well, you mentioned I'm accused of being a right wing fascist, and I'm not. I've, I'm, I'm, I'm just right smack in the middle with about an inch to the right. That's where I sit, and I've always sat that way. An inch to the right of Genghis Khan? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm well left of that, though. Well, you, um, I, mean, I mean, look, look, if Sadiq Khan becomes British Prime Minister, and that is his plan, let's be honest, then he is going to end immigration controls in the United Kingdom. And as I say, he will order a major crackdown on free speech in order to allow him to do it. Because we've now seen the way hate crime legislation has been de facto amended. It's not been amended, but what it says is the hate crime legislation says that uh, the definition of hate crime needs to evolve as, um, as society evolves. What will happen is they will define anti-immigration as a hate crime and they'll just lock up those people who are responsible for it. But they won't have to lock up many because what they'll do is they'll make it a criminal offence for up for people in my position to criticise immigration. And much as this channel is, I think, trying to be a home to free speech, you know, we can't, we can't say absolutely everything mm -hmm. and certainly we can't break the law. No. Well, you're absolutely right. Welcome to Saddam Khan's world. And, and let's face it, well, the worst thing about this is Keir Starmer has allowed him to get away with it. You know, this, this is a guy who's a narcissist and a pathological liar. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, and I, I know he's not here to defend it, and I'm always criticised for that, but I'm simply saying that's a fact. No, the, the, the reality, the reality is with, with, with Sadiq Khan, um, certainly the, the, the claim he's a liar is, is easy to stand up mm. because he began making claims about the ULES uh, implementation that simply and demonstrably were not true. Now, what you could say is, is he incompetent? And certainly that there's, there's a major question as to whether he's an incompetent and narcissistic or whether he's a straight-up liar. Mm. I have to say, there's a phrase in law that many lawyers will be aware of. He knew or ought to have known yeah. that the number of vehicles in places like Bromley that were going to be affected by the ULES was significantly higher than what he'd actually admitted to. So he knew or ought to have known. In terms of him being a racist, I'm, in, I'm entirely com comfortable with somebody who presides over an administration that says that white people should not be depicted in any of their documents. Yes. I'm comfortable calling that person racist. Mm. Very comfortable indeed. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And, of course, he's got this track record in recent times of saying about knife crime is going down. It isn't. It's going up. Yeah. It's going down in Birmingham. It's going down in Manchester. But it's going up. It's rife in is London. It, is, is, is the reason... So, look, first of all, I, I have a firm view on knife crime. I don't know if you agree with me. I believe that the reason we don't care about knife crime is because it's black kids that are being killed. I think that is the first thing. And I think that Sadiq Khan is perfectly happy... To, to stop, stop and search because he cares more about pretending to like black people than he does about the deaths it will prevent in that community. Well, he's trying to blame knife crime on mobile phones. And surely that's like oh, blaming rape yeah. on uh, short skirts, isn't it? Isn't it the same I, it, sort of thing? Lois, that's a very work, I think that's a great way of putting it. The man is absolutely insane. We've got to get rid of him. And the, the, the issue we've got at the moment... Actually, you're not going to believe this. We're going to have to pull you up because he's not technically insane. <laughs> of, all <the> things, <laughs> of all the things we've said, <laughs> narcissist, oh, racist, no. well, liar. Andre, However... I'm, 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 the, the point is, <laughs> for eight years, the Tories have been opposition and they have allowed him to get away with it. Yes. Keir yeah. Starmer's allowed him to get away with it. Rishi He's, Sunak, unbelievably. I've said this. I've, 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 I've said this. I've said this about him. The number one thing you have to understand about him, I think, having studied and I've watched all of his or many of his public statements, um, I think that he is a spoilt brat 
principally. I think he's somebody who has never been told no by anybody. What, what you watch with him is when things like knife crime, so they go, knife crime's gone up. Here's what he'll do in his answer. He'll go, well, I'm very concerned about knife crime. And I saw Mr and Mrs Smith, son of Stephen, the other day, and they were telling me how bad it was. So he'll generate empathy, first of all. Mm. Then he'll go, I've launched a new strategy on this, so he'll come up with some half-baked thing that he can claim he's doing. And then he'll go, but unfortunately the problem is the government. Yeah. Right. And so he will go through those three phrases. I'm helping him in the TV Was he debates. the only boy? I, I suspect so. I yeah. suspect so. Yeah. Also, I think I think he's got a mother that loves him very much. <laughs> and was not and was not willing was not willing to be critical of him. Because I mean, let's be clear, the story of Baba Ahmed when he defended the first and most significant f online fundraiser for Al-Qaeda. Um, you know, that what he told people about his relationship with Babra Ahmed, first of all, let's say, was fluid. It changed on multiple occasions. <laughs> but actually, for the first time in his, in, in his entire career, somebody said to him, don't do this, and, and he pushed through for long enough and discovered that what was happening was he was now being accused of being, well, he publicly stated that he was close, that his best friend was a terrorist. And, of course, now uh, that's been very damaging for him. Of course, he's changed the website. His website now claims that he's never met Bab Ramed, mm. apart from in Belmarsh Prison. Howard, have you met Bab Ramed? <laughs> No, I have not. No, well, I there haven't. you go. Well, that's one reason to vote for Howard, isn't it? There you go. So how's the campaign going, Howard? <laughs> It's going very well. I mean, as you can see, reform generally nationally is, is going uh, very well, between 10 and 12%. Um, our, some of the private polls we've done, I'm between 10 and 15%. Uh, it's, wow. it's going to be an Everest of a struggle, etc. But, but when I talk about the policies I'm standing for, suddenly I convert people who think I'm spitting the anti Khan vote. Uh, we should allow Susan Hall, and I call her parish council, Susan Hall. Can I Hall ask because... you something uh, controversial, Howard? Do you think Nigel is the man to save Britain? We've just been talking about it a few minutes before you came on. I think I think he sh he would do a grand job in partnership with Rich Richard Tice. So oh, Richard Tice. That's, that's such a good answer. You're a politician already, Harold. You know, but, but look, can we, can we not can we not just say one thing? I mean, look, Richard Tice. Come on, you can't be serious, right? He's, he's just. I mean, I mean, you know, you know, if 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 Richard if Richard Tice was a horse, he'd be a Shire pony. It was all lumbering along. You know? Andre, I've got to interrupt, mate. You got it wrong. The guy is an incredibly clever man. He's very tactically, he's very good as well, strategic. He's got, brilliant. He got a two-one from the University of Salford. What more? What more could you want? Well, well okay, but I mean, I, I, you know, it, it took me three months to say yes. He came and asked me to to stand for. for for mayor of London. It took me three months to say yes. He had to do a lot of convincing. He was very clever how he did it. I voted did he Tory get your for... consent in writing. <laughs> <laughs> I voted I voted Tory for 50 years. Bear in mind I'm very old. I'm in my this is my 70th year this year, so that's gonna be oh, interesting. Oh wow. But but to cut a long story short, Richard's I, I hope he stays as leader, but I want Nigel bolted to his hip. I want I want Ben Habib. I want but, Nigel bolted to let, my let, hip. Let me let me just let me just let me just say this to, to you, uh, Josh. Um there was, there was a poll on the uh, Talk TV YouTube channel. Now, by the way, the Talk TV YouTube channel is not representative of the wider public. It is people who have subscribed to Talk TV. However, it says, after Keir Starmer uh, indicated that he is preparing Labour for a spring general election, who would you vote for? Right, so Labour got 13%. Who are you? Right. <laughs> uh, the Conservatives got 17%. Liberal Democrat on 3%. And Reform on 64 Now, that is a sample of 43,000 talk TV viewers. Now, I appreciate that very few pro-abortion communists watch, uh, <laughs> watch talk TV. But at the, same, at the same time, that's got to be a worry for the Conservative Party, Josh. Absolutely. I think that's absolutely got to be a worry for the Conservative Party because it says that the Conservative Party Party's voters, their core voters, even in the Tory heartlands, might be getting uh, very disillusioned with them, getting Absolutely disillusioned right. with the direction of the party. But Howard, I've got a couple of questions for you. First and first of all, if you, I know you said that you wanted Richard Tice to remain leader, but if Nigel Farage says that, okay, I'm going back, I'm going back into politics, I want to be leader of Reform UK, do you think Richard Tice will step aside? Um, that's a very good question to ask me, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think Nigel, I've, I've spoken to Nigel, I'm having lunch with him on Thursday. Uh, Rich, Richard and him Ooh. are working... Richard and him are working very, very closely together to make this. It's nothing about career politicians here. We're doing because we care. We're, this country is in a mess, and reforms policies are traditional 
what I call Thatcherite policies, and I'm and I hope we get back to that way because if they are, that's where we should be going. Stop, Richard, stop for a second. <laughs> stop for a second. Lois is co-hosting for the first time. You realise when you whisper to me, you're talking directly. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, I wish I could see you guys. I still can't see you. Your camera's not working for me. I mean, it's right. utter chaos. I'll tell, I'll tell, I'll tell <laughs> what we're going to do. Stop, stop for a second. Uh, Howard, we, we would, we're going to go to a break now, but we're hopefully going to keep you on for a little bit longer. We're going to teach okay. Lois that, that about the system of microphones in the studio. <laughs> we'll be back in a moment. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals to using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about Talk Today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi Sunak the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. For the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilt. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds, so far result, nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on Talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass, <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you should have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walks into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. He's on the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares uh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, I'm just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm you're, going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Are you prepared to call is Hamas possible, a terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, discussion can you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry. We can agree on that. Show with Andre Walker and Lois Perry. Lois now understands the way that microphones work. Yeah, don't don't whisper. Ask this question straight. Don't go, don't go. Don't tell anyone. But Did I you get out of my boobs. <laughs> was, right, right. She's never said that before. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, just to be clear. In your dream. Just to, just, no, just to be clear to the listeners. Just to be clear to the listeners, I was demonstrating. You had what, your head yeah, down what, on my chest. What, what were you demonstrating? Yeah, we'd like to know. I was demonstrating I the usage tips. of a microphone. I was demonstrating the usage oh, yeah. of a microphone. <laughs> right, oh, right, anyway, yeah. over to Josh. <laughs> yes, um, H Howard, do we still have you, Howard? Yes, I'm still here and I can see you at last. Hey. 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 Lovely to see you, Howard. But um, I've got a question. So, you know, for, for, for a long time now, we've seen week after week and anti-Israel, pro-Palestine, some would say pro-Hamas demonstrations on the streets of London. The campaign against anti-Semitism has exposed widespread uh, anti-Semitism placards, widespread anti-Semitism chants in these marches. Howard... I ask you, 
what do you think needs to be done? How can we get this anti-Semitism off of our streets? What would you do and what is Sadiq Khan not doing? Well, the first thing you to do is we've got to get rid of Sadiq Khan because he's the most divisive political person I've ever heard. You know, I've been around to say uh, he's divided not just only in terms of ethnic groups, etc., but, you know, he's divided cyclists against motorists. He's, this is his role in life, is to divide, yes. uh, or, uh, you know, effectively London. He's ruined Great London. hatred. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and it's funny. What, what would I do? You're absolutely. It's a difficult one to do. I'm pro uh, Jewish and I'm pro Palestinian. I'm anti Hamas. You expect me to say two that? No, no, but that's fine. Two, uh, the two state solution is is a widely held opinion. That's something that you know a lot of us secular Jews is one that definitely um, you know I is hold there in. Two states, though. Well, it, there isn't technically yeah, a Palestinian and Israel state. And Jordan. But well, I mean, this is the thing. That's a whole different conversation. But the whole but, point. But, but, but Josh, let, let me just stop there because this is the thing right so i have no problem with somebody standing up and saying the israeli government have behaved appallingly yeah. i have no problem with somebody standing up saying ban hamas uh, i've no no problem with any of that but it's it's the it's the level of hatred and it's when i see the metropolitan police falsely falsely exactly. claiming that there was no anti-semitic chants or banners on the palestinian protest and when we when literally they are tweeting that in the face of evidence that proves they're lying that's when i start to worry well i actually was on that big long march on a sunday with with uh, you know which is in support of the jewish community they got to there's a hundred thousand going through there and i didn't hear one hate phrase and i walked mm -hmm. the whole length of it i went for the whole thing but i have walked near the palestinian uh the uh Things, and all I've heard is anti-Jew, anti-Jew. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is get the heads of all the communities together, and that's one of the things I would do, is create a group and work together on how we can basically slam heads together and say... Do you support, Howard, Howard, Hang would on. you support Would you support the following, uh, which I'm, I'm very, very keen on? I think what we should do is go through all the facial recognition, like we do, and yes. let's establish which people who are dual nationals uh, were holding up banners that were anti-Semitic and racist, and let's withdraw their British citizenship and deport them. I, I, I couldn't agree more with you. That's my point. Anyone breaking the rules and the hate crime people, and we can recognise them, let's get rid of them. Do you I not couldn't think it's agree spectacularly more? naive to say that banging heads together and getting everyone to get on and all of that? You know, when you've got people who are marching in support of, of Hamas who talk, who talk about genocide, the complete annihilation of Israel and the annihilation of every Jewish person in the entire planet. And just, How do you negotiate uh, with them, exactly? And no, on that point, no, we've, no. Got, we've got signs. We've literally got signs on the streets of London with Star of David in the bin with yeah. signs saying, yeah, yeah, keep I know. the These world clean. These are not clean. normal people. I, 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 Lois, let me explain. I didn't mean to say sit down and say hello, Mr. Hamas supporter or Mr. The ignorant person who doesn't understand what is happening in Palestine or what's happening in Gaza at the moment. I would get people who are actually important, who can influence their own communities. In London, that we haven't got okay. Hamas communities, communities I, uh, bosses, I get the actual Palestinian uh, people, I get the Muslim and Islamic groups together with the Jewish faith and sit around the table and say, you guys sort this out. Right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna leave it we're gonna leave it there simply because not not with Howard we're gonna continue to talk to Howard and I know Charlie and Lois have got some questions but um, obviously this is a channel for the whole country um, mm -hmm. so we don't want to just focus on Sadiq Khan much as it's tempting because I, <laughs> I, 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 I believe that the evil that he commits percolates far beyond just London mm -hmm. but anyway Hazim is in London Hazim you on Talk TV? Hello sir. Hello. Uh, I don't know how you think that Nigel Farage can save Britain. I don't know how you see it. How, how would, how, how would, what's, why don't you talk to Hazim? Well, well yeah. it's very nice. I mean, Nigel Farage is probably the most influential politician of the last decade. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's got us out of Europe. Much longer than that. <clears throat> well, it's, well it, yeah, we can go back a long further. I accept that with the UKIP days, I know. Well, but, and, but he, and, and don't forget also the thing with the banks recently. Mm -hmm. He is a massive influence from person. And, and I've got to know him as a good friend, and I know the person is is a good bloody bloke, and we need some honesty. And that guy's got a hell of a honesty. He's a Marmite character because our society is a Marmite society. Mm -hmm. We are devices from ourselves. Nigel would be a good thing for this country, and he should have some some influential role in actually the next administration. And I hope that will be reformed. Hello. Okay, has he, have you got a response? Hello, sir. Uh, about Sadiq Khan, how how you think he could be a um, prime minister? There's no way. He's a Muslim, and no way, no way. <laughs> We've got a Hindu prime minister. 
Well, no, well, he, wa he's, he wants to be head of the Labour Party. So if he, that, he would actually vie for that position as soon as... Well, well, nobody's uh, going to vote for him. He's a Muslim, sir. No, I, well, I, I think you're wrong with well, let, let's. I, I mean, to, to be honest, Hazim, I think you've made your point. I mean, clearly there is discrimination against people in terms of voting. But anyway, Charlie, I think you wanted to say something to, uh, to Howard. I'm curious about the future of reform, actually, because um, as much as I like the principles of it, there has been some discussion amongst people who are traditionally conservative voters that are suspicious of the flirtation between Nigel and the Conservative Party, with many people speculating that perhaps he wants to take over that party rather than take over yours, oh, Howard. Oh, God, I'd love that. So I'm curious... <laughs> as <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was almost sexual, that wasn't it? Let me answer that quite clearly and once and for all. Nigel is mischievous. He's playing games with the Tory party. You heard what he said about James Cleverly recently. Yeah. Uh, you well, you can say that. Very cleverly. Yeah, well, the, the fact he's a moron. Uh, those are the sorts of things. He, he's not really actually. Uh, uh, I think favouring himself with the Tory hierarchy at the moment, and he's not interested in that. Now, at the at the reform conference back on October the 7th, uh, he actually stood up and he was asked a question. He said, absolutely no way am I joining the Tory party. I am behind Reform UK. OK, I've got a very naughty question for you, Mr Cox. Right. On Wednesday, my understanding is there's going to be quite a big and important reform press conference where Mr Tice and Mr Farage will be in attendance. Can you tell us exactly what that's going to be about? Well, I'm, I will be there. You can wait and see. I'm not allowed to say. <laughs> uh, but yes, it will be quite a, a significant... Will it be amount. explosive? Do you know what? Is your microphone working? <laughs> yes. Why can't you hear me? Oh, just something about explosions or something you just said. <laughs> oh, OK. But here is, here is, here is another really important question, Howard. Mm -hmm. And in fact, some people have said that they want you to talk for longer and we're interrupting you. But you're such an interesting guest. Look, the reality is that I'm on the executive of a, a local association, local conservative association. Um, and there comes a point where reform get to a stage where actually uh, the, the people like me will start defecting en masse. Right. Um, I, I think that that number is about 15 percent. But certainly once you start getting to around 20, I think it will then people will be in the position in some constituencies where you would be splitting the vote if you voted conservative. And I think that the entire house of cards for the Conservative Party is at the moment shaking. But I think it starts to collapse once a reform gets to 15 or 20 percent. Your so. view. I think you're, you're, well, you've summed it up very well. Um, hovering around 10 to 12 percent at the moment in time but we've come from nowhere uh ukip and uh, brexit party never had that level of percentage of uh, national support uh, obviously uh the, the wonderful first past the post nigel got four million votes and only got one mp mm -hmm. uh, there's something wrong with their four million people weren't represented in parliament that's the thing that is and of the, course of course it's worth pointing out that uh, ukip or was it the reform party or brexit party whichever one it was <laughs> when they got four million votes uh, the Scottish National Party got fewer mm. votes than that and actually won almost every seat in Scotland. Yeah. Unbelievable, actually. That's correct. And, and, one, and one reason why they come to ask me is I've got 1.7 million supporters, which are car drivers and truckers mm. and people like that. They're, they're not daft reform, that sort of thing. <laughs> I suppose the first-past-the-post system is quite a prescient issue, really, when it comes to elections, because even if reform are well-supported, are they going to get the numbers to, to, to well, the cross big, that the big, line? Well, the, the, big, the big problem is the first-past-the-post system really is predicated on something that has been blown apart by people like... I always complain about Alan Mabbott in the Conservative Party. Mm. By people like him. Right. It, it relies on political parties being broad churches. If what you do is begin booting people out of the Conservative Party and indeed the Labour Party because you don't like their political opinions, if you start taking control of selections so it's only ever the leadership mm. who decide who the parliamentary candidates are, mm. then you yourself have destroyed the first past the post system. Yes, and I right. would argue that the Conservative Party and the Labour Party have done that in spades. Mm. The reality is that Nigel Farage should be a Conservative minister and the Conservative Party should never have taken us into the European Union. He should and be in the House of Lords, actually. Well, no, no, he wouldn't accept that now, because he couldn't no, be No, 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 but at the time, yes. sorry, at the time, but, yeah. but, but the reality is, 
what's happened here is the Conservative Party and the Labour Party, this is why I despise the people in these political offices, have deliberately have deliberately made their political parties incredibly narrow in order to benefit their own friends, mm -hmm. but now insist on maintaining the pretense that they're a broad church when it comes to the general election. Mm -hmm. it, reform is breaking that, I would suggest, Howard. Yes, you're absolutely right. And I repeat what I said earlier. I've voted for 50 years, I've voted Tory. And yeah. I'm not voting for them this time because they've wrecked the country. It's as simple as that. And they're and not Tories. No, and not. You're right. The they're Tory snobby socialists. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, that's, well, they're, they're blue, blue Labour and, 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 the, and, the, and the Labour people are red, red Conservatives. It's as simple as that. What we've got, we need a change. And the first past the post, you know that the London mayoral uh, election, my post I'm going for, is now first past the it post. Um, and and, and yeah, what hasn't been be, that yeah. used? It used to be the preferential, the first That's and second right, vote, the transferable vote, yeah. second vote, mm. which is, is going to make it even harder for me. Mm. I know my task is uh, uh, incredibly difficult, but when I talk policies about what matters to London and what we would do as a Reform UK, suddenly people sit up and say, yeah, I agree with you. And guess what? 70 batch Tory, uh, bench Tory MPs agree well, with what we you need, What we need, actually, in, for you to win, we need a Galloway or a Livingston or a Corbyn to, to, do what, to do to the Labour Party what you're doing to the Conservative Party. Then you might well win. You're, you're absolutely right. I mean, Jeremy Corbyn and I hear is 60% chart of standing. Galloway is already standing. Uh, um, oh, is and, he? And I didn't know that. Yeah, mm. yes, yes, he's standing. Uh, and, and what we're seeing is there's 19 you know, people standing. You know, it's not just the raving loony party, uh, uh, that sort of thing. But from <laughs> a point of view, uh, yes, it would benefit me if we could split the Labour vote. And I'd like to go head-to-head -head with Susan Hall. I'd look forward mm. to that. There's no bins or dolphins or anything like that standing against you, is there, Howard? And Mr Binhead. <laughs> <laughs> That account is funny, though. Have you, have you seen their social media? No, my favourite Twitter account, account remains... <laughs> my favourite account. Twitter account remains Big Ben <laughs> Clock Tower, which just goes, at one o'clock, bong. I love it. I love it, so I heard on the TV yesterday you're standing. Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> That's got us sitting up. I, yeah. <laughs> She's lost I, the words. I, 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 I refer the honourable gentleman to the answer I gave some moments ago. Okay, didn't... is it time for a break? You didn't answer. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't answer, Lois. Come on, answer the question. She's a I, politician already. I um I, I I don't know what what I'm doing, but the uh, well that's the true. The racing. <laughs> the racing. <laughs> the racing. <laughs> oh, here we go. Showism in action. Very very <laughs> <laughs> um, Howard, you'll be the first to know whatever I decide. Oh, that is fighting talk. Yeah. Howard, well, look, good luck. I, I won't be voting for you, but then again, I live in Berkshire. Um, thank God. <laughs> I'm one, of the, I'm one of the refugees. He never gets out of bed before 6 p.m., so, you know, he won't get to the polling no, station I'm, in time. I'm a night owl. He's a, he's a Labour voter. <laughs> I'm a night owl. Uh, anyway, well, thank you so happy much. Happy New Year to everyone. Happy New Year. Yeah, happy New Year, Howard. Year, Howard. That is Howard well, Cox. <laughs> he's Fairfield UK founder and a London mayoral candidate. And he's a very naughty boy. I like him. He's a nice guy. He's a very nice Straight guy. Straight after this, we're going to be talking about all the problems that we've got with immigration, with Rakib Ersan, who is a brilliant contributor. You can get in touch with the show. 0344 499 1000. Calls just charged at your normal rate. Text word talk plus your message to 8722. We're going to sort her out during the break. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals to using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about Talk Today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi soon at the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. For the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilt. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds, so far result, nil, absolutely nil. 
Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass, <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you should have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walked into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares uh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm you're, going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Just Are you prepared you. to call is Hamas a have, terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, discussion? You can't, can you? Music for the many, I love poetry, we can agree on that. Music for the many, I love poetry, we can agree on that. They go and change it. I'm furious. They've moved it to 8.30 every Friday. Talk TV. What just happened? I am furious. Yes, this is Talk Radio and Talk TV. And it's, uh, and, and Charlie reckons it's the best show we've done so far. It is, yeah. All Christmas, yeah. Without a doubt. No, well, Did you not see the other one which I was in? Yeah, that one was the worst one. Yeah, that was awful. Hey, I was in that too. Oh, I'm just don't saying, say, I've, 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 I've walked in. Don't wink at me. Why I'm not? sorry. Not? <laughs> That's not by, by the way, by the way, can we so just be clear on another thing? When you wink, you realise that camera is on you. <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I want everyone to know that I'm a flirt. No, he is, yeah. I do like men winking at me, actually. He's although a bit of, although he's a bit normally of a, they're a few decades older than you. He's a bit of a winker. He is a winker. Oh, OK. Um, he's a proper winker. Right, anyway, what's next? Right, listen to this. Despite the fact that thousands of asylum backlogs, uh, thousands of asylum claims are still in the backlog, the government says that in one month it has cleared the 92,000 backlog on applications. Well done to the government, well done. <laughs> oh, that, that applause fell flat, didn't it? Don't you love the fact that actually when they went on strike and they bought, well, did they bring the army in? Everything runs so much more smoothly. That's brilliant. That's, there's, there's some wisdom there, isn't there? there? Is that, was, that was so depressing. The UK border force where border security improved when they went on strike. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is the best one ever. What's, what's the latest one? They've said that the, the crossings have slowed down over Christmas. Well, I'm not surprised. It's, yeah, it's terrible outside. You know, they're, they're not going <laughs> no, to my, my that, thing, My favourite that came from this government was that you, you, you know, you were only allowed to enter or leave the country if you'd had a COVID vaccination unless you came on a small boat. In, <laughs> yeah, which, case, in which case, you weren't even tested for hepatitis. Yeah, I, mean, I heard a <laughs> rumour actually over Christmas that some people who were um, asylum seekers were going home for Christmas only to come back again afterwards. That might have been a... a well, I've, I've, got, I've, got, I've, got, I've, got, I've got to be honest with you, it was something that really upset me. Was it in Sudan where we had to evacuate British nationals and the vast, vast, vast majority of them were people that had claimed asylum in the United Kingdom and then gone on holiday to Sudan or moved back there permanently? Uh, right, as my, soon as the my attitude was... to that is, if it's safe enough for a break, it's safe enough to stay. Mm. Yeah, but, but, but our system encourages it. I mean, the reality is, this, you know, this is the difficulty. We have mixed up economic migrants with refugees. Mm. I keep saying this, and I'm sorry for being repetitious, but I, I, you know, I went to the border between Poland and Ukraine, and I met genuine refugees. Mm. They were women and children. They wanted to be as close to their husbands and boyfriends as possible. Mm. Now, for some of them, that was coming to the UK because their nearest relative. But for the vast majority of them, <laughs> it was Moldova, it was Poland, it was Hungary, it was places like that. And 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 we we sit here with this claim: oh, these are genuine refugees from Albania. Yeah, I know. Mm. I mean, let's be honest, the Albanians had a fight with the Serbs and actually won, right? I mean, you know, it's not, <laughs> it's not as if that's, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's an extraordinary thought. Anyway, Raki Bersan is a social policy analyst who laments this regularly with me. Um, 
but um, I want I want you to, to to just comment on the following: Do you plan to congratulate the government on clearing the ninety-two thousand backlog in one month? That's the announcement that they've made, Rakeeb. Well, Andre, you know that I'm not going to be so soft on the government. And as you say, we have a truly dysfunctional asylum system where the line between genuine refugees who are fleeing immediate risk of persecution has become increasingly blurred uh, between that and economic migrants who may be understandably seeking uh, greater economic opportunities to that in their homeland. But that doesn't constitute fleeing persecution. What, what, amazes, what, what amazes me, you look at Little Moldova, population mm. 3.5 million. At one point, it had 350,000 refugees. It was the poorest country in Europe, obviously. Uh, Ukraine is now the poorest country in Europe by some distance because there's a war going on there. But you notice, 350,000 people go there, right, even though it's the poorest country in Europe. No Eritreans no Somalians, mm -hmm. no Ethiopians, no Albanians. They were all Ukrainians who went there. Now, what does that tell you about the refugee system? No, what it tells you is that these people, as a second language, can speak Russian, and that's true of Moldovans as well. Therefore, they want to be in a place that's close to, to, to their homeland, uh, Moldova's next door, um, and where they can understand the language of local people. Whereas, of course, you know, the, the Somalian refugees don't want to go to a place unless it's comparatively rich. Is that because perhaps they're not refugees, they just want a job? Well, I, I think that traditionally uh, people fleeing persecution that have a preference for a country where there's cultural and linguistic compatibility, mm. yes. Andre. Uh, there's no two ways about that. Now, I've said that Britain should take pride in its history of rehoming the world's most persecuted peoples. Uh, the problem is that at the moment the world's most persecuted groups are being left by the wayside mm. because we have an overburdened asylum system that's having to contend with male-dominant illegal migration on the English South Coast. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, of course, had, had there been a genocide in Nagorno-Karabakh or Artsakh, um, mm. which, which ultimately didn't happen. Azerbaijan probably shouldn't have invaded, but they're, but they're not as bad, perhaps, as some of the other governments in the world. Had there been a genocide there and there had been Armenian refugees attempting to come to Britain, we wouldn't have been able to accommodate them because our asylum system is filled up with economic migrants. Mm. Imagine what would have happened then. No, absolutely. And I think that it's interesting that you raise that conflict because I think more generally when it comes to our asylum system, it has a very, very poor record when it comes to providing sanctuary for persecuted Christian minorities. Yes. Uh, the reality yeah. is uh, at the global level, Christians are persecuted across the world. And even though we've become a rapidly secularised society, we still have an established church. And I think our record in terms of providing safety for all those persecuted Christian minorities in parts of Africa and Asia is pretty poor. We've actually, we, we, we've actually, we've actually, unfortunately, imported uh, hatred and division from elsewhere in the world. I mean, Absolutely. look, you know, we've I imported their conflicts. Yeah, they? I mean, look, yeah. I asked the Metropolitan Police why it was that homophobic hate crime was declining in London but increasing specifically in Tower Hamlets. Um, and they said that they didn't know the answer to that question. Then I asked them the religion of the suspects. They didn't know the answer mm. to that. Mm. I asked them the ethnicity of the suspects. They didn't know the answer to that. Well, and I then, and, and, then I, and then I then I asked them very simply, how many of them have the name Mohammed in its various <laughs> forms in the name of the suspects? And they said, uh, you're, this is a vexatious claim. We refuse to answer. But my point, my point <laughs> is, my point is, not not necessarily to be anti-Muslim, but to be anti-third mm. world immigration. Mm. The reality is the reason and that homophobic hate crime is increasing in Tower Hamlets is because we are bringing some of the world's poorest, least educated and least mm. metropolitan people and dumping them there en masse. No, absolutely. And I'd make the point that you can be loyal to your faith and ultimately be of the view that people are absolutely entitled to live the life that they want to live. Uh, I, I think that's a very by the, important by the way, point. By but... the way, Rakib, I, mm. want to, I want to hand you over to Josh, because Josh asked a question mm. earlier, which I think is really, sure. really interesting. Perhaps you might have a take on it. I appreciate you weren't listening because you were tuning in uh, your system to, 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 to communicate with us. But he was asking about all of these pro-Palestine marches. Mm. Now, look, I have no problem with somebody saying the Israeli government has behaved badly, as I have no problem with saying that Hamas is a terrorist group. But mm. we've seen a huge amount of anti-Semitism on the streets, and the Metropolitan Police and the Mayor of London seems incapable of dealing with it. Do you have mm. any thoughts on what we should do now at a governmental level to try and deal with this problem? 
Well, I, I think the solution is pretty straightforward. Uh, firstly, I would make the point that uh, believing that there should be an independent, sovereign Palestinian state, that's a perfectly legitimate political cause, Andre. We've discussed that before. But what is totally unacceptable is anti-Semitic chanting, uh, the displaying of pro-terror paraphernalia at mm -hmm. these protests, and in my view, uh, a very direct and targeted for incitement to violence. And, and there you would expect the police to robustly intervene. And I'm surprised that we're talking about this. The, the reality is there's no point prescribing particular groups if when people express support openly for those groups, you don't take any action. What's the point in, what's the point in prescription then? Josh? Well, <clears throat> the point of prescription is, well, this, this is the question because the point of prescription is it then becomes illegal to then support those organisations. But not so in the, practice. So And, and this is also, and, and kind of just bringing it back to Sadiq Khan and the New Year's Eve firework spectacular, when they said, <laughs> uh, when they said, everyone's welcome, I immediately thought to myself, everyone's welcome except the Jews. Mm -hmm. And that's what I thought. And my, and my question is, you know, what, 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 why are the police not acting? Is it because they're too scared to, um, you know, prosecute these communities? Are they too scared to kind of, you know, dislodge the kind of multiculturalism balance? And is it that they're, they're driven by a multiculturalism ideology? Why are they not tacking the, the support for terrorist organisations? Why are they not, you, you, you know, when they see signs uh, that say, put Jews in the bin, keep the world clean, why are they only going, oh, we want to put up information Josh, about Josh, that? Josh, Why are they not tackling Josh, it? But Josh, we've also seen in some of these closed communities uh, women walking with perfectly legitimate clothing, mind you. It's your choice what you choose to wear. And people saying, this is a Muslim area, you're not allowed to walk dogs and you're not allowed to wear miniskirts. And the police don't care. Rakeeb. Yeah, I, I think that is just it's a, a, much of what has happened in recent times is absolutely bonkers, uh, Andre, if truth be told. And, and and I do think that when it comes to some of the points that Ros has made, I think it's a, it's a combination of the police being quite fearful of offending groups which they consider to be oppressed, yeah. uh, and 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 the, uh, the the fear of being accused of being anti-Muslim. Uh, and uh, you know, the term Islamophobia is used a great deal. But I think because of that fear, there's been quite blatant forms of anti-Semitism which have gone unpunished um, at these protests. And I think actually undermines the pro-Palestine cause, but crucially, it, it undermines the credibility of the Met. And I think the Met, in my view, is an organisation which is failing. And in, in my opinion, it's too big to succeed. And I think that its days are very much numbered unless it gets a grip and it doesn't restore public confidence in it as an organisation. I think you're absolutely right, and I think that there are things that are suppressed. And I saw something online today, and I I, I, I think that it's correct, but I, I will, you know, we can obviously have a look at it and make sure that it is correct. But what it exposed is that there was a geneticist doing surveys in, in Scotland um, based on people's DNA and DNA samples that were taken, and they found one particular community in Scotland where the rate of incestuous births between fathers and daughters was 6,000 times higher in one particular community. They haven't named the community, but the information and the report was suppressed. The guy was threatened on the basis that it could, it could affect community cohesion. Mm. Uh, so, you know, these things happen in, I mean, in lots I mean, of different I mean, ways. What, what is sad about that, Rakeeb, and I've, I've talked about this before today, uh, my niece is privileged enough to go to Bolton School, which mm. is an incredibly posh school up north where the fees are in the tens of thousands of pounds a year. Um, and obviously it is in a very, very uh, heavily, uh, an, an area that has had heavy immigration from the, the Indian subcontinent and specifically Pakistan and Bangladesh. You know, she drives through in a coach to her posh school past girls who have who are of the same age as her, who have a mm. British passport as well, who are being deported to Pakistan in order to face forced marriage aged 13 and 14, and the authorities know about it and they don't mm. give it the slightest toss. And you think, this is a story of two different worlds that exist on the same plot of land. No, absolutely, and I think that, that those kind of issues have been going on 
for some time. And, and I think it's actually what it really shows is that some public institutions, what you're ultimately talking you're talking about British women there. Mm, uh, but, right. but, but I think that many public institutions see that, oh, this is a community issue. We mm. shouldn't intervene. We shouldn't get involved in that. Uh, this is a bit too so sensitive for every, So for, for every one child born from an incestuous relationship between father and daughter in the general population, there is one community where it is 6,000 children, 6,000. And what we've decided is the solution to that, just like the rape gangs in Rotherham, is to not mention mm. it ever again. Ever. I mean, well, uh, what about what about the 6,000 rape victims, or 12,000, or 18,000, mm. or however many it is? Not well, bothered. Uh, Andre, we've, we've talked about the, the grooming gangs crisis uh, in the country. Um, on a number of occasions and what it really shows is that far too many of our public institutions whether it's local councils or police forces uh, they prioritize racial and religious sensitivities over protecting the very most vulnerable in society that's right it's a fundamental dereliction of duty and actually along with those sensitivities that they've been dangerously mixed with victim blaming tendencies mm. um in some oh, yeah case. they're slags they're 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 stupid they don't understand yeah but they're also 14 i don't care go in and drag the bloke out mm. exactly and i and I'll, I'll make this point that um victims of these grooming gangs they're disproportionately in the care system, yeah. in, in insecure, insecure sections of the care system, and they're disproportionately living with disabilities. Yes. And, and, and I, I really terrible. think it, it tells you it, it, it's such a r remarkable um, scandal. Um, and it's a nationwide scandal as well. That's the truth of it. And what it really shows is that you have this um multicultural ideology that for fear of offending a particular community or that this excuse that or if we were to intervene um in these cases we thre we threaten to destabilize community cohesion no yeah, so we pretend criminality doesn't exist th 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 Paul... th 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 their priority is to protect the very most vulnerable in society and to facilitate justice in our society absolutely okay, okay. paul is in belfast and whoever keeps messaging me saying that i'm christo just stop i'm not, I'm not gonna read those messages out <laughs> paul is in belfast paul you're on talk to me all right how you doing i'm all very right. good mate how are you yeah grand all right yeah so do you support the IDF law and what they do on, you know, for all this um, genocide in oh. Palestine? You know what I mean? I, oh, okay. I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I, I didn't quite hear that, but I think... No, he's was... having a go at the Israeli so soldiers in Israel. Mm. No, oh, he's not. You, okay. Oh, OK. Oh, OK. You know what I mean? OK, so, so, so let me tell you my own view, oh, and okay. I'll ask him to keep his view on it as well. My view is this. Israel has made a monumental mistake for years, haven't they, by this mow the lawn strategy, where what you do is you denigrate Hamas, but you leave them there. Denigrate them, then a year later, denigrate them again, then a year later, denigrate them again. Yeah, they need to finish it The off. reality is, <clears throat> nothing can happen unless we eradicate the terrorists. You know something, Paul? I, you know, when there was collusion in between Brit the British state and the loyalists, that might have been something that we should apologise for, but it denigrated the IRA and ensured that they were no longer capable of committing the terrorist atrocities. The reality is you cannot have peace without security. And in my view, Hamas, the, the, the thing that needs to happen to Hamas is they need to drop dead, right? And I think that whoever does that should do that. Then afterwards, there needs to be a peace process in which we concede that the Israeli government have often got things wrong. Rakib, your view? No, my view is that for far too long, the it, it, that for, firstly, I'd make the point that the Israeli government, uh, in my view, Benjamin Netanyahu himself has, has got himself wrapped up in all kinds of controversy. Uh, and for me, I think people make the mistake of equating the Israeli government with the Israeli population. In yeah. fact, there's a great yeah. deal of anti-government sentiment within Israeli yeah. Um, society. Uh, I, I think that the, the, the Israeli government in recent times has been responsible for forms of militaristic occupation and population displacement, especially in, in the West Bank. But what I've been really disappointed is that people can't even bring themselves to admit that October 7 was a terrorist attack. Yeah, uh, yeah, which, is quite, which is quite quite remarkable in itself. I, I, I still have hope that there can be uh, peace in the Middle East, but there have to be significant changes, and I think that actually Paul. requires changes in leadership on both sides, actually. Paul, Paul, what, what can... What can we, Paul, give me a second. Uh, you, you muted them for a second just to let Rakib answer. 
what can we learn from Northern Ireland or what can the Israelis and the Palestinians learn from Northern Ireland in terms of trying to push peace forward? It's completely different in Northern Ireland. They Look, weren't calling for the annihilation of the English people. Thank you. Thank you. Talking about, Thank you. No, we talk, I come from an area where British Army you know, killed a lot of fucking innocent people. So it's, you know what I mean? And people in Derry, the British tar troopers. Yeah. Okay, by your logic, then, you know what I mean? We had every right to come and bomb London or whatever I had to do, you know what I mean? Okay. No, so by your logic, we had every right to do that. So, you know what I mean? Well, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm defending Hamas. I mean, I think we. we I think we've got. A, we've got a little bit confused here, haven't we? <laughs> Thank you so much, Paul. Um, but but Charlie, I mean, it, it is a situation that's spilling over into the UK. But with, this is not the only conflict mm. which is now yeah. in in Britain. We have all sorts of, you know, uh, community groups that are battling each other over all sorts of causes. I have to say to you. I think that immigration on a small scale has been a good thing in terms of individuals getting individual jobs. My, my own view is that en masse, uh, mass immigration in order to culturally enrich our society has been a solid gold disaster. Well, and what you said there is, is actually political delusion and it's quite perpetual because you've got two principles which I believe are fighting against each other, which is multiculturalism and free speech. Yeah. Because you can't speak about opposite cultures or other cultures that you may or may not agree with and then obviously when you get problems with su certain cultures the authorities don't want to but deal you, with it because they've look, supported the multiculturalism look, look, so at the most culturally the most culturally and 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 in terms of food diverse country in europe it's italy and the reason why Italy is so diverse in terms of its food, its culture and its practices is because it was a series of city-states and people didn't move from state to state. In reality, what is, what's happening here is we believe that a cultural enrichment comes from everybody moving to everybody's country, but actually that just creates a bland soup. What actually creates something that's really culturally interesting is separating people out into their own tribes and letting them develop naturally in their own way, well, and that will be different in different places. It's like Japan. Japan, I, my understanding is they didn't have any trade or anything with any other countries for four or five hundred years. So you've mm. got with Japan like a, almost a distilled culture, yeah. which is so unique and so special. And let's be clear: the Japanese are not keen on immigration. And the key, <laughs> the san thank you so much. Uh, we're going to be using you a lot more in the new year, as you know. Oh, absolutely great guest um, and we're going to be back straight after this we're here thanks for joining us you're with talk tv on tv on radio online we're on your smart speaker as well criminals using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others no matter how well trained most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn do you know what i love about sport today we do it all sunak suella scones I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi soon at the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. For the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilt. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds, so far result, nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass, <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you should have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in, what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walks into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. He's on the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares uh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, Ofcom. 
Mm. Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. So yes, I'm going to do. I'm you're, going going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Are you prepared you. to call is Hamas possible, a terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, discussion can you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV, it's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry, we can agree on that. talk radio and talk TV and we've been talking a little bit about community relations in Britain or lack thereof I mean you know I, I get depressed about the whole thing because literally time and time again we've had people contact the show um, saying that uh, isn't multiculturalism brilliant isn't you know bringing all these migrants to the country absolutely marvelous look if you earn less than £40,000 a year and you're in your 20s, then you are a net beneficiary of the state, mm. right? Therefore, every single person in their 20s who comes in to this country who earns less than £40,000 a year makes this country poorer. There is a reason why they go, the economy's growing. Yes, but it's not growing by enough in order to pay for the number of people that mm. are coming in. We are becoming poorer because of mass immigration, and that is poorer culturally, that is poorer economically. Um, it's just a nightmare. Mm, I agree with you. I think that... And what are you doing? There's no mic. <laughs> oh, we can still hear you. Can you still yeah, hear me? me? Yeah. I don't know where it is. OK, the mic has fallen off. Okay. Charlie, right. get talking. Yeah. She's, I don't know what she's done tonight. Yeah, yeah I'll keep speaking. Um, I think that... Cultures can mix together. You can get different cultures that do blend well together, but they have to be uh, principally founded with the same principles. So if you've got people coming from a Christian nation that want to move here, you ten it tends to work. You get European migration, I think that works well. It's when you import other cultures that don't want to integrate with Christian culture, which don't want to integrate with Jewish culture that's already prevalent in this country and has been for hundreds, if not thousands of years. That's when you get the problem. So I think but personally, we, but we've told, we've you should told stop people, immigration if you can't work we, out but, what their but, principles are. But we've told people that it's effectively unpatriotic to be patriotic. We have told people that if you come to Britain and you attempt to, um, and, and, and people ask you to integrate, they are racist. And you should say, no, I have a right to continue to speak Urdu. I have a right to continue to speak Hindi. You have to start accommodating me. I don't yeah. come here to accommodate you. If I went to Saudi Arabia and I said, look, I'm bringing a few well, can people... can I tell you something? Bringing a few people over. I want to build a church. What are they going to do? Knock it down <laughs> exactly. and, and throw you in I want you to put back, be able to plant the first brick. Yes, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Actually, what would happen is, more than that, if you were to send a Christmas card, you would be convicted of the offence of un undermining an Islamic nation. Yeah. Which carries, really? yeah. which carries 10 years in prison. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not saying that people shouldn't celebrate their face in this country. I'm just saying that if you well, look at how tolerant we are and, and people say we're racist or, or intolerant because we say, hold on a second, mate. I don't think that's a bad but, thing but, to ask questions but about what, what about, people want to do. But what about the situation that we're in with people like Salman Abedi and others and Jihadi John, mm. uh, his dad, where it was, where it was, oh, we need to come to Britain because we're so extreme that even extremist <laughs> regimes in the Middle East <laughs> think that we're terrorists. <laughs> oh, come to Britain then, why not? Yeah. I mean, I mean, Salman, Salman Abedi, Salman Abedi and Jihadi John joined the family business. Mm. The family business was terrorism. Right now, now let's just be clear on something in terms of Jihadi John. You know, there's, there's still people, Mohammed Enwazi still has family in this country. Now, they are not terrorists, but his dad was. Mm. You know, and the, the kicking off about the fact that, oh, oh his dad was taken away and convicted of terrorism. Well, yeah, I mean, his dad was a terrorist. Yeah. You, can, you can circle this back to what I said before the break about multiculturalism and free speech. We welcome you in. Come, come, come. But when you do something wrong, we can't talk to you about it. We can't say you shouldn't do that. Well, we we can't send you to prison or home. send you out of the country. Yeah, yeah like you said, send yeah. them home. Yeah. yeah, it's a question of respect fundamentally, because the whole the whole thing is is you, you say there's a prevalent Jewish culture in this country. Mm. I would argue that is the that is the complete opposite. Jews in this country, there's only a population of just over three hundred thousand Jews in this country. It's mm -hmm. not a big culture. Judaism in this country is a significant minority, but the fact is, it, and it's got nothing to do with skin color. 
our community is very respectful. We know we live in a Christian mm. country. We respect Christianity as a religion. Yes, we have freedom to worship the way in which we want to, and we have synagogues, um, and we and we and we go to synagogue and whatever. And bearing in mind, our synagogues have to be protected mm. by security, Absolutely. and our schools have yeah. to be protected. And that's been a way of Jewish life for decades in this country. Mm. But the whole problem is, it's about respect. Mm. I uh, fundamentally, most Jews in this country, I would say, I, I can't say for definite but i would say speaking from my own experience fundamentally most jews know one how to assimilate mm. two respect the christian culture mm -hmm. and three respect the country respect the country that Absolutely. we live in yeah. and subscribe so to the you, country's so values just, well, i want to clarify can I, can just say this can i just say this let me clarify what yeah, you said there quickly just just when i said about the the prevalence of the jewish in this country it's because this country is founded upon judeo-christian values that's what i was Fine. alluding to also, what you're saying is you're not going around telling everybody it needs to be, um, you know, it needs to be run by Jewish law, which is what the exactly. way the Muslims mm. are doing that. In mm. fact, actually, conversion to Judaism, I know this from two attempts, actually, <laughs> is, that, is actually not particularly easy. You know, no, it's, it's very it's, difficult. And it's you actually almost have... actively discouraged. No, yeah. you have literally, you literally have rabbis slamming doors in your faces and I that's know. part of the process yeah. of it. Um, but the whole point is, is okay, there's... Sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> but the whole point is, is okay, there's Jewish laws and, and, and a lot of Jews stick to Jewish laws, but most Jews also follow British law, yeah. Yeah. and that's the whole problem. But is, like, you know, like with this certain Islamic populations, they want Sharia. Law. It's Sharia law, but that's the that's the whole thing. Is right, is okay. you can I I I believe multiculturalism can work as long as the no 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 only oh, if the oh, if, if the people coming into this country i listen i say it works because it has worked for me it has worked for my religion you know i'm a minority community but yet i'm fundamentally yeah, but british. I'm, I'm a minority community i was british i lived in lambeth no, uh, no, 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 it's a fact by the way by the way can i tell you something somebody said to me once they said they said look um of 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 the you know the the British Muslim community, only ten percent of them supported the World Trade Center attack. There's three point nine million. Of them. <laughs> that means only three hundred ninety thousand people supported the World Trade Center. Only well, over over fifty percent in a, in a recent YouGov poll said that um, well over fifty percent of of British Muslims had very strong or, or had anti-Semitic beliefs. And, and this is the thing, because people also equate, uh, that they, they say, oh, I'm anti-Zionist, oh, mm. those Zionist pigs. All Zionism is, is the right for Jewish self-determination within the it. homeland. Mm. And bearing in mind, just like all other movements, you get different forms of socialism, you get different forms of conservatism, yeah. you get different forms of Zionism. There is an overarching concept that you have religious Zionism, you have political Zionism, yeah. you have secular Zionism, you have different denominations of Zionism, just like you have different denominations like of saying, Christianity. Sure. I always think it's like saying we're not anti-Catholic, we just hate the Catholics that uh, that believe the Vatican City should exist. Which is the exact thing, and one has to ask yourself, you're anti-Zionist, anti okay, you say that. Do you support Israel's right to exist? If you do support Israel's right to exist, whether you like it or not, you're a Zionist. Yeah. Mm. That, and that, that's the fact. All right, yeah, all right. See, look, I was, look, I was doing no, some no, no, Lee, Lee has been in touch and he said, you, you, you're so boring tonight, you remind me of Newsnight. Right, oh. so, so. <laughs> we got so, to live in the south. Oh, right. Let's do this. Well. We've got to talk about what was our favourite, what was our favourite moment of the year? Oh, that's that a good question. Suggestion? Let me think about that one. No, I've got an first. answer. Go on. My favourite uh, moment of the year was when Harry and Meghan's documentary was the 211th most watched programme when they were beaten by the likes of Paw Patrol and Peppa Pig. Yeah. Yeah. That was one of my favourite moments. What are we going to do with Meghan? Okay, uh, um, I think I think she's going to undertake a significant rebrand over the next year. Really? I think she needs to. The, in, Does it, she want to be American president? Oh, without a doubt. I've called that years I, ago. I mean, I mean listen, yeah, there, are, there are conflicting accounts. Uh, she needs to significantly revitalise her image and rebrand herself if she's even thinking about going to, going to uh, make but, but, a political but, but, run but, for but, office. But, but, Josh, can't she just tell us 
her truth. Oh, that's her, her truth. truth. By, her by, the way, truth. by the way, by the way, how many times are we going to hear her bloody truth yeah. again and so again, tell, again and again? I'll tell you what, she breaks her silence more often than I break wind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you don't and need who to cares worry. when she does? You don't, need, you don't need to worry, Joss, because she has put out a statement saying that she has been inundated with lucrative offers for 2024. Oh. And if you believe that, you'll believe yeah, anything. Well, it's it's about, been actually it, very widely reported that one of her, the top agencies, William Morris and Deborah, in which she signed to has actually been struggling to book her for any sort of gig. So oh, actually, that, that is what we call in the industry utter claptrap hogwash. Because I think <laughs> I might put out a statement saying about how I've been inundated with offers for 2024. So can I ask you? So well, I, actually, I have. Can, yeah. I, can I ask you? Can I ask you, um, Charlie, how many people do you think advise global companies? Uh, and multinationals and governments on various affairs of state who got a B in art and a D in geography at A level. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say question. zero, maybe. Yeah, unless there's some zero. nepotism involved, I mean, I mean, then I'm going to say amazing. zero. It's basic. Look, and, and obviously Harry vehemently denies the allegation that staff at Eton College helped him get the B in art by cheating. He vehemently <laughs> denies that allegation. But well, he had to be helped to get a B. He got a B. Yes. <laughs> oh, so, I mean, if you were Charles, you'd go, bloody waste of money, should have sent him to the college. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, but but this is the thing when they're talking about, you know, furnace and whatever, and, and actually what they are is two pretty averagely talented individuals. I mean, I say that because whilst whilst Harry was not academic, he clearly did fairly well in the army, and yeah. that apparently was genuine. She came to a reasonable standard as an actress. Reasonable. Um, reasonable, but she wasn't an A-lister by any stretch of imagination. But now suddenly, because of privilege from the country that they've successfully branded as racist... That they hate. They make a fortune. Yeah, yeah that's true. I mean, to be fair, I've used to, I used to watch Suits when it was on, didn't know anything about her prior to that. I've not seen anything of her after My that. My son's obsessed with um, her in, in terms things. of acting. Um, well, I mean, to be fair, have you watched it, Lois. No, I can't. Well, I can't. I can't. I mean, look, I say, just I, watch it and you'll understand yeah. why he is oh, obsessed. Okay. Yeah, That's yeah. All I'm, well, say. I'm glad you said that because I was going to say the same thing. I only watched her in it because I thought she was fit. Oh, is, it, is, it, one it, of, is it one of those where if you if you paid her enough money, would she be willing to keep her clothes on during the show? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, you know, the show was all right. I quite enjoyed the show as a show, not just because she was good-looking in no, it. But that's, that's a good show. Yeah, it's, it's not, true, it's not a bad it? show. No, it's definitely it's <laughs> the right show. The thing is, right, and I've tried, I've tried to think about this, what I would say to an American if they asked me about her. You've got to understand that when they talk about a person of colour or racism, right... It's boring, in, first in of Britain, all. In Britain, in Britain literally people are racially discriminated against on the grounds they're black i.e. they look black uh -huh. they have a black they're black skin yeah right british are bemused by the following thing in america so in america because of slavery people who are of black descent are disadvantaged generally in terms of education mm. in terms of where they live and in terms of a societal split which sees them get discriminated against automatically on things like accents so with that in mind, you have to understand that when her and her chums in Hollywood are accusing Britain of discriminating against her for being black, they're talking about a country that didn't know she was black. Right? <laughs> That's true. The thing is, that it, is it, true. It, 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 we're speaking about different cultures. It's importing American problems, That's American right. societal yeah. problems yeah. into Tasting. this country. The reality, the reality is... The reality is, she was she pissed people off in Britain because she was being far too American about things. So what will have happened is, I guarantee, the situation with the tiara... Now, we as British people understand why that went badly wrong. So, she is a duchess. Oh, she's becoming one. Oh, and they're all bowing, scraping, going, oh, oh, mom, all this sort of thing. Right. But these are incredibly powerful officials mm. who work for the head of state of the United Kingdom, mm. and they will doff their caps all day. But remember, she is not the head of the state of the United Kingdom, and she, at this point, doesn't realise how significant that is. No. So she goes in to the tiaras where, well, of course, you can look at all the Her Majesty the Queen's tiaras. No, you can't, but they're not going to say no. So mm. she looks around, she picks the tiara she wants, and they say to her, well, uh, of course, we don't we don't generally use this tiara because the, the, uh, the sapphires were donated by the Tsarist government we don't know whether they were misappropriated so in order to not offend the russian state the home set the foreign secretary says we shouldn't use them well have the russians complained uh, the russians have not complained but the foreign secretary yeah. well i'm i'm going to become a princess i'm allowed to wear it well, i want I, that one well, I want <laughs> yeah, 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 well, <laughs> But it'll be, but, 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 but I'd rather think you should take note of what that she was. Won't she mm. wouldn't listen. She She'd demanded it. With stars. And can I tell you something? When they went to the Queen to explain that, she received the following message: not what Meghan wants, Meghan gets. 
I own all of them. I will pick which tiara you want. So, of course, immediately, mm. these guys bowing and scraping, she doesn't understand mm. that she's not their boss. And right. she starts yes. shouting. And, of course, she sat there going, I want to be good mates with Kate. No, no, no. Kate's going to be the queen, and you're very much not going to be the queen. And then, and of course, what she's then done in her own mind is she has decided that this is as a result of racial discrimination. Josh, I don't know about you, but in the run-up to that wedding, the number of American channels that called me up, and the number one question was, how do I feel about her being black? She's just got a suntan. I yeah. mean, she's not. It's so true. I mean, also, the racial discrimination against Prince Archie, right, he is ginger. Much more discrimination on the grounds of being. We're sat there going, going, Mm. Prince Archie is being discriminated against because he's black. He's paler than me. Right? But but, 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 of course, for reasons I just explained about America, that makes perfect sense in America. In Britain, of course. So what's happening is we're being told that we don't like her because she's black. Mm. F- it, even though we didn't know she was black. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that, the, yeah. the whole thing is, 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 one, um, Harry and Meghan are very keen to forget that there was actually widespread joy yes, at yeah. the it time of joy. their wedding. Absolutely. There was, and, and actually, she was being held as this breath of fresh air to come into the crown as an institution. Not, not necessarily because of her skin color, but the fact of, oh, the monarchy has moved on. She's an American divorcee. This is not yeah. Wallace Simpson all over again. It the monarchy. It, it didn't work on. out that well the last it, time. It, it did didn't it? work out no. well. It didn't work out well this time. <laughs> no, but, um, no. <laughs> but but also, it, it's fun. It, the fact is, fundamentally, Meghan just did not understand the institution she in didn't. the slightest. No, she did you. not work. She was ill-suited and ill-fitted. Prince Harry, um, you know, either one didn't warn her about it, or two was too stupid to know about well, it. <laughs> no, not even that, because I think it's a case of, oh, um, you know, that it's just imagine... been a, it's just been part of my life all this time. Josh, but Josh, can, you, can you imagine this? Now, I want everybody who's British to understand this. Meghan goes. Right, let's summon the let's summon the Director General of the Commonwealth because I'm interested in making some reforms. She can't. She did what? She did can't she? do she that. Didn't. So, so of course she's now going. Well, of course, because I'm a woman of colour, I'm now going to go to the Commonwealth Secretariat and tell them what they should be doing. <gasps> now, now th- that will have gone off like a nuclear bomb. That, that story actually shows you that she does understand how the monarchy works because if the king was to pick up the phone that person will turn up. If Prince William picked up the phone, that person will turn up. So maybe she felt that marrying into gave her all the rights well, she and did. privileges that were afforded to the royal family. The thing is, there is still... The, th- the thing about the institution is there is still very much a hierarchy. Oh, well, the whole, yeah. And the whole institution is based around supporting the people at the very top. That's so right. even the Prince and Princess of Wales, and, and this is where you see all these headlines of, oh, the Prince and Princess of Wales are overshadowing the King, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, because their role is effectively they are the main support system mm. for their majesties the king and queen and that is the prop that that not the problem that is the the and direct they, purpose and the, and the of thing, their roles the th- that's something that megan did not the get thing, the other thing that people don't understand uh, is that the, the the there is no vice president right it is the king right mm. so so if you go well i'm a royal duke i want to do this and He's the what? king. <laughs> and what? Yeah, but you can't say that because you know that if you were a royal duke, your call would be answered, your request would be granted nine times out of ten. No, not if, really. If you, not if you, if you do, not if, if you try to break the pecking order. If you do, if you do things in the proper way, right? So what you don't do is, is you, you, you sit with the king and you go, I rather think that I could make a contribution to the Commonwealth. It would be rather keen of you to help, right? Let's bring in, <laughs> but but not let's phone up the secretariat and get involved because then that will go off. And of course, what happens is the chief of staff of Buckingham Palace organises you to receive the slap down, dollar yeah, slap down. Of course, yeah. and I understand what you're saying about the hierarchy, but what I'm saying to you is, if you are a general ordinary person taking a phone call from someone who's a member of the royal family, You'll pretend you to are care. going to take that call. Yeah, yeah, but you're going to pretend to care, aren't you? you going to go you're going to go right. well 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 of course mom we'd be happy to come over get on the phone to the chief <laughs> <laughs> this is not the proper way of the doing whole, the, also yeah. the whole point is is who who is the head of the commonwealth 
Indeed. It, so the whole point is, is, so if, if Megan was to go in and go, oh, I want to make changes, and they'd go, okay, well, we'll listen to you, but we can't actually do anything about it because if we're going right. to make changes, we have to get permission from the head of the Commonwealth, yeah, who yeah, is of course, the yeah. monarch. Which, so is, which is, is, of course, which is, of course, the other point, which I, which I was driving at before, of course, what you, you assume that the family have a role. The head of the Commonwealth is the king. Mm. Camilla has no role. Uh, William mm. has no role. Kate has no role. Harry has no role, apart from supporting the king. More next. We're here. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals to use the XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about Talk Today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi soon at the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. For the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilt. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds, so far result, nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass, <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you should have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walked into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares uh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing interviews. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm you're, going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Are you prepared to call is Hamas a have, terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, can you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV. It's the only place uh, where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry. We can agree on that. Uh, texted in saying that um, that Hamas are the political leaders voted in by the Palestinians. I just want to be really clear on something that's really, really important. The Palestinians are being abused by Hamas, even if they are potentially suffering from Stockholm Syndrome. You've got to remember, Hamas has abolished civic society. It's abolished independent media. It's not abolished, well, it's abolished elections, by, but even when there was an election, when they got voted in, they threw their political opponents off a building. I don't agree with everything that Israel does. I think they've made an enormous number of mistakes. But at the same time, this idea that the solution to the problem in Gaza is to allow a terrorist organisation to continue to rule as autocrats over it from Qatar, and remember, the collective wealth of the three most powerful leaders in Hamas is $10 billion. Never done a day's work in the life. It's all your aid money. Anyway, uh, Nigel Farage uh, is somebody who's been a huge name this year, going into I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here Jungle. Um, and the question we've been asking throughout the show is, is he the right man to save Britain? I'm joined by Ben Walker, the chairman of UKIP. Ben, what do you think? Good evening, how are we all? Oh, we're doing all right, we're doing all right. Hello, Mr Excellent. Walker. 
Hello, how are you Hello, doing? Hello, Coz. <laughs> yeah. BW, he calls me LP, so I call him BW. Well, that's I that's do. that's worth putting on TV, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> so, Mr. Farage, is he the right person for the UK? Yes. To, to save us from our, our pit of doom. Um, Nigel Farage is the ultimate political opportunist, and I would say that he, des he definitely does have a place, but I'm not sure where that place is yet, and I'm actually not Is it sure. Botswana? You know, is that the way you're thinking? <laughs> it could be. The, the problem is, is that I, he had a perfect opportunity uh, back, you know, with the referendum um, and, and to move UKIP into being effectively the third biggest party in politics, and that, and that was fully squandered, um, that opportunity. Yes. So I... I, I'm not sure whether or not he is the right person. I, I believe that he, like I say, he's got a, a part to play, but he's not. In is Farage? Can you ask you this question? One thing that I've always suspected about Farage, and I might be wrong, is that he's somebody who fundamentally believes in unity on the right and bringing all these parties together. And whilst he, whilst he would, he would love the the predominant party to be reformed, he effectively accepts it's going to remain as the Conservative Party. Or is that just me getting him completely wrong? No, I, I think you're pretty pretty close to the mark there. I, I think that he does believe in unity, but yet he is a part of the problem when it comes to the fracture as well so you know our, our parties uh well i say our parties but ukip and reform cannot work together because of um differences in uh leadership and egos and stuff like that so he's got his part to play on, on that front and he and he's caused lots of problems um in trying to make a unified approach but he definitely does believe that you know despite all the things that he hates about the tory party he wouldn't believe that they're the only vehicle that he's going to ever have any success with. OK, Cynthia is in Swindon and wants to ask a question about UKIP. Cynthia, what is it? Well, good evening. <clears throat> I'm 75, I'm a retired social worker and I am also a retired UKIP member. Retired in what I, sense? I used to... I was signed up with UKIP, I leafleted five days a week, I tabled once a, once a week, so I'm well into UKIP, and I am well into Richard Tice. You're well, well into him? To, uh, well, not literally. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I'm sure down, Tice would like down, down, Sorry, down. sorry, sorry. Don't, <laughs> don't say too much, because I was... A, uh, don't say too much, I was asleep this phone call, for this phone call. You've woke me up. Oh. Now, <laughs> I think that... The UKIP party, Richard Tice party and all the other small parties, they need to get together. They need to put the... put the Stop banging her on the boco, I'm watching you. <laughs> I, think it, I think it's time that they all put their differences between... They should put the differences... Yeah, I think we understand that, Cynthia. <laughs> ben, ben, how easy is that? Because... There are a lot of egos involved in this, and there's a lot of there's a huge element of people joining these political parties because they're literally disaffected with somebody or in the Conservative Party, or they've got an ego. I mean, I, I appreciate you're slightly different, but there are there is a lot of that going around, isn't there? Oh, it's, it's the biggest problem that we face, really, in in terms of working together with other parties of a, of a like-minded political opinion. Um, for the last few years, I've been working on exactly that. So we've already got um, an, an electoral uh, agreement. If I, we share a description now with the English Democrats, so we've got uh, we're very serious about working together with like-minded political parties. I've got talks with another three uh, this month. In fact, yeah, it is January, isn't it? So yeah, this month. Um, so I'm doing all I can uh, to try and unite the right. And, and the weird thing about that is that. If you look at all of these smaller parties, be it Reform, English Democrats, you know, uh, you can you name them, they generally have a UKIP backstory. It's very strange. And uh, I've always found that, you know, people that are on the right, if you like, politics, and I don't particularly like putting us in that category because I think we're much more than that, but that it's like herding cats. So to get these people <laughs> to agree on anything, it's really difficult. So you know, do you think the breaker of, the, of this union then is, is it, the unifier in terms of Nigel? Yeah. 
do you think he's the well, only one that can bring it back together? Because he was effectively, in my view, Ben, I think you and I have discussed this in the past on the phone, mm. that, you know, if he hadn't have left UKIP in 2017 in, in uproar about Gerard Batten and Tommy Robinson, perhaps yeah. UKIP could have kept the momentum going and, and pushed forward to get to a point where everybody on the right wants to be now. I don't know, I, I, and I agree, and we have discussed that, and, and I think you're absolutely right, as Mary, in what you say. Um, the problem that we've got is that, well, UKIP still functions, and the majority of our members, whilst they are, you know, they like my, uh, Nigel and they like the things that he says, they also know what he's like. That's why they've stuck with UKIP. They haven't followed him anywhere else. So there is a majority of people out there, or, or not a majority, but a, a minority, a grouping of people that know exactly how Nigel operates and they haven't followed him. Um, and, and, and and presumably, is, presumably you are one of those people. I, I guess I am. I, yeah, I, I yeah, want to contest I, that very quickly, Ben, because I did a straw poll on Twitter a little while ago about reform because I was curious as to whether people were following the party because of the policies, which are essentially mm. watered down UKIP policies. I'll give credit to UKIP there because the UKIP policies are still fantastic. Um, but when I did this straw poll, I asked people, are you following for the policies or for Nigel? And it was around 60-40 it was for Nigel. So perhaps yeah. people are actually following him more, more than you recognise. However, I don't think that that's a negative for the, the smaller parties on the right. I think that if you get is, their act it, together but, but, but and promote it, those good but, policies, but, you'll get them back. But let me ask you this. In fact, I'm going to go around and ask everybody. Isn't part of the problem here that we are we are far too focused on this presidential type of politics where people are interested, who is the leader? Who is this? And, and actually, you know, very few people recognise that they vote for their local MP. Very few people care that they vote for their local mm. MP. Very few people consider that to be the role of a general election. That started with the TV debates, didn't it, in 2010? Well, I with mean, the Clegg I, and the, you know the, the Brown and the Cameron interviews on TV. But you know, that's just normal mammal behaviour. I mean, I'm sorry to really... Normal mammalian behaviour. No, <laughs> mammal behaviour. I'm sorry to deep it, as my 20-year-old would say. Go on, let's get yeah, deep, but, baby. But, you know, in, um, in, in all societies, in, in, like mammals, there will be a leader and of they course. will follow the leader. Yeah. And they won't follow his policies. <laughs> <laughs> They'll follow him. Yeah, but yeah, but if you yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, but if we if we're talk, so so what people continually go is which the one which is the one with Tice, which is the one with Farage, which is the one with Lawrence Fox, mm. right? Which is the one with Neil Hamilton, right? And they, and, and they don't think of it as individuals. And, and what I would love to do is for it to be much more of a localised debate mm. within each parliamentary constituency. And one of the ways you do that, by the way, is to remove the party name from the ballot papers, something that Tony Blair brought in. I, I mean, in the old days, if you wanted to vote for Adam Afriye in Windsor, you had to know he was the Conservative candidate. Well, one, the pro the, what you're saying is, one, we, we, the, the thing is with the general election, you vote for both the MP, the local MP, and the leader. And by extension. But by extension, by proxy. But what you're saying is as well, and we're talking about this presidential style of politics, if you say, OK, well, we, 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 I want a, a much more localised sort of a localised election per se, and we want a separate election for the leader or whatever, voting for the leaders, well, isn't that going to take us even more into the presidential style of politics? Well, I, I mean, I, I, I personally think, yeah, I mean, that's a good point. I mean, mm. I personally think, so this is just to explain that I've previously said to Josh, I'd have two votes at the election, one for the Prime Minister and one for the local MP. Um, the reason for that actually is accepting that people are voting for the Prime Minister and then saying, well, let's give you an opportunity to think about how to vote locally. It's not so much me trying to double down on people voting for the Prime Minister, it's more me trying to accept that that has polluted the local election. But you'd, have a pre you'd have a Prime Minister that might not be able to get anything through and this is and, yeah. and that's very yeah. much... Yeah. That's, <laughs> the thing is, and that's like the US politics, because people yeah. do vote for different candidates for the Senate, for the Congress and for the President. And also, if we're talking talking also i know there's been so, a lot so of talk example. about proportional representation and first past the post you know i look at the israeli political system and see how much of a mess is that would we really want that for our country uh, well, uh, well, I'll tell, an, no, an election every no, I, year no, i'll tell, no. I tell you what we have at the moment we have an elected dictatorship even more than what, when lord hailsham talked about it but look ben can you hang around for a little bit longer because we're going to stick with you um and we're going to come back after the well i don't know if we've got the news but we're going to come back this been a, it's been a long, long few days, but we'll be back with Josh, with um, Charlie, and indeed with Lois uh, straight after this. You can call on 0344 499 1000. Back in a moment. We're here! 
Hi. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals to using XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about sport today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi soon at the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. For the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilt. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds so far result nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass, <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you should have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walked into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. He's on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares uh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing interviews. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm you're, going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Just Are you prepared you. to call is Hamas a have, terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, can you? you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV, it's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry, we can agree on that. and change it. I'm furious. They've moved it to 8.30 every Friday. Talk TV. What just happened? I am furious! Stop talking now. <laughs> this is The Late Show with Andre Walker and Lois Perry. Lois, are you enjoying yourself? Do you know what? I really am. Did you just send that photo to, uh, to some of our friends in the Reform Party? <laughs> oh, so, so what's next? Oh, here we go. <laughs> we know what's coming, don't we? We're still, we we're still here with Ben Walker. <laughs> ben, um, so what are the plans for UKIP this year? Well, it's a big year, to be honest. I mean, we're all waiting uh, with bated breath for the, the news of a general election. Yeah, so May. We've got quite... We've, maybe May, yeah, who knows? <laughs> We, we, we've got um, we've got quite a good campaign actually we've been working on, which is going to be uh, hopefully a bit of a broadside for, for for people. So, but I can't obviously say no, sure. too much. Um, but we're going to continue uh, based on your last caller. We're going to continue to reach out, try and work, and build on sort of relationship with other other smaller parties to try and unite the right. Indeed. OK, well, look, I'll tell you what, we're going to start taking your calls now. It's 0344 499 1000. I think we've got a couple of slots free. Uh, Rick has messaged in. And Rick, by the way, has stopped saying Andre Walker is his only comment. He now says <laughs> Josh Rom is a big quiff. <laughs> Uh, Mark from Norwich has said Sadiq Khan does impact the whole country because at that fireworks display he beamed London, a place for everyone, into the sky. If he gets illegal immigrants, terrorists, murderers and rapists into London, then they can easily travel to the rest of the UK. James in Manchester says, Hi, Andre, don't listen to the haters. You could afford to lose a few pounds, but you're certainly not overweight. 
Oh, well, well interesting. That's, that's nice to know, isn't OK, it? <laughs> uh, Morris is in Peterborough. Morris, you're on Talk TV. Uh, Andre, good evening to you. Good Thank evening. you. You're not my Morris, are you? You're, you're Morris. No, 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 it's a different Morris. You haven't, Hello. Got, you haven't got a Morris. Oh, I have, actually. <laughs> well, uh, uh, je, je m'appelle Marie. <laughs> Smoothie over there. Look at him go, eh? This is like, it's, gone from, it's gone from talk TV to Tinder TV. <laughs> Tinder to babe station, if you want, right? Come on. Don't forget sliding into the DMs. It's just sliding into the hotline. <laughs> That's it. Sorry, Morris. Go for gold. Right, OK. Uh, can Nigel Farage save Britain? Yes. Now, for Ben, what I would say is that I fell out of love with the Conservative Party years ago. And on every election, local and national, when there was a UKIP candidate, I voted UKIP. And would you still do that now? Uh, not now, because I have moved to reform. I voted for the Brexit Party when I was able to. Uh, I moved probably further right than UKIP by uh, by going full full blood on uh, on reform. So so now, Ben so Ben what Morris is effectively saying <laughs> is you're a bit of a communist. <laughs> you commie you Ben. <laughs> the first time I've ever heard by the way by the way I just want to be clear this is the only show on British television <laughs> where the chairman of UKIP gets accused of being a socialist. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm interested because you said something really interesting before. He did the straw poll on X, and I know people follow Nigel. And I'm interested with the with the caller actually. Is that why he's with reform? Because in truth, if he was to boil down the policies of both UKIP and reform, he'd find that they are certainly not more hardline than we are. But quite the opposite. Well, uh, notwithstanding that, I think there is a strategy which can be used perfectly to garner votes for reform and why not get UKIP back together, bang heads and, and get a proper party going between you, the two of you and use the silver vote which is there available. Mm. There's about 12 and a half million pensioners in the country and mm. Most it'd be like that episode. It'd be like that episode of Father Ted. <laughs> you know, when the, when the singer no. comes round and all the old ladies are there. Sort of, like. no, but in all seriousness, he's absolutely right. Twelve and a half million silver surfers, whatever they and the uh, the older people do go out and vote. And yeah, absolutely. And they tend to to not be, um, you know, on the left. O on the left, indeed, Morris. I mean, look. One of the things that I just wonder is. Are older people so supportive of people like UKIP and Reform because they've seen society change so much over the years? Yes, and because we've been let down by by governments for for decades now. Mm. Um, do you know, actually know what the basic state pension is? Uh, it's about eighty pounds, isn't it? Well, it, it amounts to £8,122 a year. Oh, so it's Which more... Is about 60 Yeah, so it's way, it's way more than 80 quid. Right, Morris, why are you yeah, moaning? It's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's £150 odd pounds. £150? Pounds? Why are we paying them that? Why are we paying them that? Just They've to, paid in well, their whole lives, just, 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 just to smell of cabbage and be flatulent in inappropriate locations. Right, OK, please ignore it. it please continue it, your very valid points, Morris. It, 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 if that is the lifestyle that you want to... Um, bestow upon pensioners then that that is what they've got he doesn't basically. he doesn't mean it he doesn't mean it and and the the national insurance uh, reduction that came into place today is a slap in the face for pensioners because pensioners don't pay national insurance yes mm. so it's no, yet another right. yes but another pensioners but but uh, allow me allow me to attack pensioners for a moment i'll stand up for pensioners okay well allow, allow me to say this Look, the, the people who are drawing their state pension now are without question the most irresponsible generation in the history of Britain. They are the people that have put their investments into housing that has ensured that young people in this country will never, ever get on the housing ladder. This is the generation that demutualised all of those great British institutions, whether it be Clifford Chance, Goldman Sachs, whether it be the, um, the, the, the bank, the, what's it called? The... Um, 
Bank of England? No, the banks, the the old uh, the old type of banks that used to exist. Building societies. Building societies. Mm. They were the people that did that all for their own personal profit. They're now demanding that their pensions get put up into a pot of national insurance that their own political leaders that they voted in throughout their lives have made unviable as a result of uncontrolled immigration. I think that what this generation of grandparents hands on to their grandchildren is a solid gold disaster, Morris. You cannot blame the politicians' actions on pensioners because you know, as well as I know, that what is spouted as a referent, uh, as a uh, the party policy before an election is never followed through and they do exactly the opposite every single time. That's right. And I've got, it, has to, it has to be said, Ben, has to be said, Ben, that the argument that Morris had advanced in response is that the leadership, whether it be the economic, political or media leadership that have existed during his life have let down the country, but individuals totally. are not to blame. Yeah, um, well, the, the, there is... The pensioners that, as individuals... I. I'm sorry, Andre, I think you're talking garbage there. Uh, look, I think he's trying like to entice a, a response. Just yeah. like a politician. Yeah, but, oh. but, 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 but Ben, I have to say, I've got time for Morris's view, even though I was being provocative there, simply because it's not, it's not these people that have voted for it. No. No, and, and, you know, and I, I hear both your views, and I'm somewhere in the middle of that, to be honest. I think pensioners in this country have been let down for, for years on years, you know, and, and it, I, I can't remember the league table exactly, but, yeah, in terms of pensions, uh, we are pretty low within the European countries yeah. uh, in comparison to the likes of France, Germany, Italy, and all of those others. Can, but, um, hey, do, yeah. can I just say one, one very quick point, and I'll put it to you. Do you feel, actually, the thing that's disabled, if you like, people from being able to buy their own home is the fact that we now need two incomes, not one income, but two incomes, because of forcing women into the workplace who don't want to necessarily be there with childcare that it costs more than them actually doing the job, so they might as well look after their own I mean, kids. how, how, how well, little must you love your children if you get a job that's paid less than the childcare? Well, they think it's their right. This is the problem with women now they think it's their right to not have to look after their children don't have them then don't have children you know that's the easy way around think... it isn't it lp is correct uh, basically um you know what, what's happened in this country is, and you touched on it before before the break, but the culture is completely wrong. You know, it's yes, like that it's not about policies, really it's also. about perception, this is a big problem, but our culture is broken. What is wrong with having a functioning family where a a, a, a woman would stay at home and bring up children? That, yeah, so, it, so, 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 that so yeah. Charlie, did your woman stay at home and bring up the children? <laughs> Sounds like it from his Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, isn't it? Uh, no, actually, my situation is quite different. So when He's my got ten wives, I wish <laughs> um, <what> ten wives. <laughs> no, even even half is too much. <laughs> well, it the CSA you, half. It, it depends. What <laughs> <laughs> no, so I've always been hands on dad. So when my daughter was younger, I would because I was self employed all the time. And I've always I've been self-employed since about nineteen. Yes. So I was quite fortunate that I was able to juggle my work around my daughter. But and you sent her down the mine. No, my my ex actually a pharmacist. So my daughter's mum was a pharmacist. So she had a good job. She had a great job. So you know. Because I'm hoping it, the thing is, is women also that should want to work should not be discouraged from working. Absolutely choice. And from having choice. and from yeah, having a gone, career as well. Yeah, but we've jumped. I I, 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 feel... I actually think there's some nuance to that because if you have a woman who's a career woman who wants to have children while still pursuing her career, something's got to give. Yeah. And sadly, Normally in, my the mental health of the children. In, in my experience, career women don't want to give up their careers. I, I once, my, I, I once I, dated I a girl who wanted to have kids and put them into care. I, will, in me, I said, we're not doing that. I, I, will, I, will tell you, I will tell you, when I worked for Westminster City Council, there were as many wealthy families as poor families that were being investigated for child neglect. But obviously, the reason the wealthier families never got into any trouble was because they'd just hire a nanny rather than the child being yeah, taken sure. into care. If you can but, earn more money than it costs for the childcare, then there is an argument. Yeah, but, but otherwise, what are you doing? You just I've don't got want a, friend, a baby, I've got, really. I've got a friend who's a private tutor who who said that some of the children who are most neglected and, and abused by neglect victims had had multi-millionaire parents who just spent all day at the bank and just didn't, didn't the, give the, a toss. The biggest know? gift you can have it as a parent is your children, and that's, it sounds like an obvious thing but to you know say, what the trick but is? it really is, and I think that people don't respect that enough. No, I, I agree with you, but you know what the trick is? You only have a nanny till they're three, right? They don't remember. <laughs> oh. <laughs>
<laughs> my kids have got zero recollection whatsoever as far as they were concerned. I was really hands on. If you boil all of this down, um, you know, we are vilifying. Uh, the family unit yeah. almost in the country. And that is a problem because now we're looking at it in, well, we're looking to 70, 80 years that we've got a big problem with our population in terms of we don't have enough people to do the jobs the, the economy needs. And that's why the government of the day is quite lax about migration because they need the body. Yeah. Mm. And, and, and it's self-defeating, isn't it? We're allowing this to happen just because we're, we're more worried about our pronouns or we're, we're sort of... Uh, we're encouraging people to go down the LGBTQ route, whatever, and be cats and moons. And, and we're not actually saying, look, you're a bloke, you're a woman, you know, you can have a baby. And if you do, well, I've, 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 told, I've, told this, I've told this story before, Ben. I've got a friend of mine who's a very, very serious Christian, and he sat with me one day and he said, Andre, I need your advice. He said, my daughter's come to me, she's 14, and she said she, she fears she's genderqueer. What do you think? What do you think you should do? I should do. I said, tell her to f off and get a life, right? Yeah. And that is in fact what he did. Parenting she... by Andre Walker. But she's fine. She's I fine. I bet it works. I oh, bet it works. Of course. Yeah. Or, if I was in that situation, I would just say, all right. Come back to me when you're 18 years old, and then yeah. we can have this discussion Which when you're an adult. Which is your view. Even then, it's too young in my but, view. But, 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 yeah, but look, point. f off and get a life is precisely what and he worked. said, and of course it worked because all she had, she had some bloody left wing teacher mouthing off of in course, her ear, yeah. going, is. "You're this, you're that, you're whatever, yeah. you're actually a wardrobe." All this <laughs> sort of a shaved head and some green. Yeah, let's all shave and, our heads and go yeah, to green and, and, and a ball ring through the nose. You know, yeah. typical. But I'll you can be old, darling, if you want. That's fine. I'll tell you one thing that I've discovered. And this is one thing, <laughs> one, one piece of advice, one piece of advice I'd give to any young person going to university. The, the alternative <laughs> people are always boring. If yeah. they've got orange hair, blue hair, that yeah. sort that the ones with the nose rings, yeah. they'll be the most boring. I, there was a girl, they've got, isn't there, it? there was a girl who, who lived on my uh, lived on my floor when I went to university in my first year, and she had a genital piercing. And yeah. I will How tell you, you know? and I will because every every <laughs> every conversation, every conversation she had with anybody in the end, managed to weave its way oh, round yeah, to yeah, her yeah. private yeah. parts. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm, uh, Morris, on, Morris, Andrew, Morris, Morris, I'm going to give you... Morris, I'm going to give you the final word on this before yes, we move Morris. on. Go for it, Morris. Thank you. Thank you very much. I know nothing whatever about uh, your, your most recent comment. <laughs> 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 I'm very glad to hear it, Morris, from Peterborough. I'm Ignorance very glad is to bliss hear it. on that one, I think. And, and what I... All I would say is that as uh, a pensioner approaching i shall be 80 in april you sound and, great and in the well thank you so much i i am great um, <laughs> i really like this bloke <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and lois to demonstrate oh you haven't spelt my name correctly it is spelled m-a-u-r-i-c-e oh that's not, not me Morris, personally got it there. Uh, sorry no, I know. your name's but, maurice it, not morris it is Maurice, but it is pronounced Morris because I am English, not British. I'm English. Hey. Hey. All right. Well, Morris, 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 um, Morris. Morris uh, if you ever come across anybody who works in the News UK accounts department in Peterborough, please tell them they're not very good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and they're based in Peterborough. Anyway, uh, so. Um, um, I've got a message in. The person who's been messaging in saying Christo's producers now says Andra's producers. <laughs> yes, we are importing foreign conflicts through mass immigration. <laughs> Vote reform. Uh, somebody, uh, so, somebody has sent this in saying, I've had an awful start to the new year, Andre. Had to visit my uncle Bert in hospital um, as he pickled a bag of daffodil balls uh, from his shed and ate them at Christmas, thinking they were onions. The matron said, don't fret. It's still early days, but it should be out by spring. Oh, <laughs> oh that's definitely one of my boyfriends. Okay, <laughs> so uh, thank you, thank you so much, Maurice. Ian is in Clin Kilwinning in Scotland. Oh, Ian, you're on Talk TV. Hello, Ian. Yes, hello. Hello. Yeah, that's me. Tell us what you want to say, Ian. Ah, no, um, it's to do with the cost of living. Go okay. for it. Yeah. Uh, now, this seems to be the the primary uh, objection of the British people on the, you know, in the current state of affairs of the, uh, brought about by the British government, largely, well, to a considerable extent by the British government. Yeah. And it's the cost of living. 
mm. is uh, the um, is the is the main reason for mm. the discontent. But what I'm really what I really have to say is the, the not enough um, attention has been paid to net zero. Yes. Because yes. net zero is the basic, seriously, uh, the, the need to this need to, apparent need to save the planet, which we will never, never do. We can't control the climate. I have to. I have to and say. Yeah. I have to say to you, Ian. The thing that worries me is the way that we are. I mean, if you look at our society, if you look at the way that we're destroying the family, if you look at the way that we're destroying children's educations, if you look at the way we've destroyed the public finances, if you look at you, with the way we've destroyed the health, wealth and happiness of this nation, it has all been self-inflicted. We made a decision to shut down the schools. We made a decision to push children back. We made a decision to force people to wear masks. We made a decision to destroy our economy. We made a decision to bankrupt our nation. We made a decision to go for net zero, push people into fuel poverty, rack up their bills and destroy our energy security. Each and every one of them has been a policy of the British government. Disputing that. But, but these are contributory factors. And it's my, my particular gripe is, and I think it is uh, justified in saying it, it's the cost of net zero, uh, which is the cost of energy. And the cost of energy is down to every single thing that everybody does. Mm. Our biggest enemies, our worst enemies, couldn't inflict no. a more... Uh, is our society, Ian, is our society self-aborting? It's, it's what? Is our society self-aborting? As in, is this the end of Britain and now it's just a case of our society imploding? And in the same way, In the same way that the... Ro you know, the Romans weren't really defeated. They just fell apart as a society. Yes, well, that's how we're in danger of doing that. And I wouldn't disagree with that for one minute. But uh, the, the feeling... My feeling is, is one of kind of frustrated optimism because the none of the good things that could be applied to our country are being applied at all no every single one of them is as you yourself said <clears throat> is being uh, is is being enacted against us so, so why it why the optimism you. part why why the you said you're optimistic what what's the optimistic part uh, of that uh, what uh, that we can uh, implement those uh, things and change things around no, I'm hopeful, hopeful. That they're for a change. Fair I'm enough. not looking at uh, now what's going on. Mm. I'm waiting for the time when it will change for the better. Okay. And where this stupidity will be, will be reversed. Ian, we're out of time. Uh, Sean the Sheep has been in touch saying, Andre, stop talking. You're giving me a bloody bad head. Well, if you want good head, you know where to go. <laughs> <laughs>
weirdest plank that we've had in what, yeah. three years. Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walks into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. He's on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares oh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm going going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Just Are you prepared you. to call is Hamas possible, a terror group? Is it possible to have a rational discussion You can't, discussion can you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV, it's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry, we can agree on that. Radio and talk TV, um, I, th I, th I think of that as an excellent joke before the break. It was good. It was good. Okie dokie, right. Um, so, um, let's read this one out. Do you want to read that out from Mitch? Andre, I can't believe that old fart was complaining that pensioners won't benefit from a reduction in national insurance contributions because he doesn't pay anyway. The truth is that the country's finances are in a mess largely because of successive generations have happily voted in governments who've borrowed money to provide them with the public services that they wanted to enjoy but didn't want to pay for. Mitch from North London. I think you read that a bit fast. It yeah. was a bit fast, but it's a bit long, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Is that Mitch Winehouse? Although, to be fair, it could be argued they didn't get what they paid for in terms of public services. Very much so. Yeah. I mean, it's bit, it, it's dreadful, isn't it, the whole situation? I mean, now, I, I've, I understand why young people voted for Jeremy Corbyn. They've got no skin in the game in the economy. No. No, none at all. No, you're possibly right Possibly never will do. <laughs> yeah, pro you're probably right. Yeah. Josh, I mean, are you any closer to buying a house? No, absolutely not. And at, and, the, age of 20, and the, at the age of 29 now, no. And, and you've got a pretty good job? I would like to think so. Well, I mean, I'm, a, I'm a freelancer. Yeah, but most, but most people watching this would think of an entertainment correspondent at The Sun being a pretty good job. I mean, it, 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 I'm not going to complain. It, I'm, it's not customer uh, services at Lidl, is it? No, no, no. no. You're, 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 you're right. And, 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 and this is the thing, I think it's exactly what you say young people didn't have a skin in the game they didn't necessarily think about the economy so they saw this old fart going on and on and on about social issues which they're like yeah we can get behind we're gonna vote for him so that's exactly why they what's got I mean, that, 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 that is that is a major problem isn't it ben the fact that i mean when when you were younger i mean i don't know if you went straight into the royal navy but you were able to get a decent career get get a decent job and and you know there was a prospect of buying a house whereas now young people you know you were talking about i mean where i where i live and admittedly it's windsor way but um you know a, a four bedroom house is seven hundred thousand pounds the people growing up in that community have no prospect of buying a house there no i mean it's a really sad state of affairs and i, I do worry about my, my own children and how they're gonna gonna do it i mean my eldest daughter is a solicitor and she struggles so it's um you know it's it's the same in it and i i hear uh, what's being said there but uh, you, your last caller said about you know concentrating on the um, silver vote or the blue rinses and that is again part of the problem and you've mentioned there you know you can understand why people have levitated towards corbyn but the political system doesn't represent people properly and politicians concentrate on the people that they will get to vote for them but they don't actually want to try and represent people if you like well, you say that, that the Conservatives aren't really... They don't know who they're concentrating on. They don't know who they're no, representing. What's, no, what's, they don't know who no they're appealing to. No, yeah. what's, what's, happened, what's happened to the Conservatives, very simply, there's been a historic realignment in British politics where, for the first time since Benjamin Disraeli, people in the south of England who want low taxes and people in the north of England who want a return of real economics have got together. Mm -hmm. But the vested interests at Conservative campaign headquarters don't want the Red Wall no. uh, because they fear that there is a risk of losing the metropolitan elite, which, by the way, guys, sorry, has already gone. Yeah. But 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 they, they never but, had them. But they don't they don't they don't want. 
they don't want the red wall that's that's the issue and what they'd rather do is appoint themselves all to the house of lords and make a couple of quid uh, uh, going down with the ship do you not think it's also to do with the fact that Liberal Democrats, when they went into coalition, I think we talked about this before, everyone who's been put into these safe seats now are actually really Liberal Democrats yeah, they MPs. Are. Yeah, they are. The, the Liberal Democrats have been the biggest winners out of all this because what they've done is effectively taken control of the Conservative Party. I mean, Ben, that's that's a problem, isn't it? That's a huge problem. I mean, one thing I've never understood about the Lib Dems is that they're, they're seen as the protest vote. I mean, what's <laughs> that? I mean, um, the, the Liberal Democrats. The Liberal Democrats waited two hundred years. The Liberals waited two hundred years for a popular insurgency, and then backed the Goldman Sachs position. I mean, what the bloody, <laughs> hell, what the bloody hell was going on with that? It's incredible. I mean, talk about a, a, a bunch of people who really don't understand what they are. But um, I mean, it really is such a sad state of affairs, and you could sit here for days on days trying to get to the bottom of it, and you just won't. I mean, I, I think you know. Again, mentioned earlier, it, it is a bit like the Romans. We are now in that that sort of, I don't know, sunset period. Uh, our days have gone. Um, and I think any optimism is about, well, how do we try and create something how do we moving recreate? forward from this? Mm. OK, well, so, Ben, Ben, we've, we've kept you on for much longer than we intended to, uh, but you're such a good guest. We really appreciate that. Ben. Ben Walker, the chairman of UKIP. No <laughs> doubt we're going to speak to him again. Let's go straight to the phones now. Tony is in London. Tony, you're on Talk TV. Good evening. How are you? I'm chipper, old boy. How are you? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, I'm 75 years old. Um, I've come up the hard way, left school at 15, and made a success of life. I'm sitting here drinking a glass of champagne watching you and admiring the young lady next to you. She's um, not young. I'd like to... <laughs> <laughs> what I'd like to... I'm younger than you, Andre Walker. Thank you very much. That... Can what you carry I'd... on? I like this man. What I'd like to say is that I'm going back to the Palestine marches. Oh, yes. And the, demoni the demonisation of the, of the so-called far-right football thugs, as they was uh, mm. designated as, that came to protect the senator. Yes. Now, in, in another in another outrage in the world, these will be our Tommies. These yes. will be the guys. These will be our guys that go, that sign up and go and fight the wars. Right? But how many of those Palestinians and the, and the Just Stop Oil mob would sign up and wear the uniform. I've often None thought of that. Well, None can I can I tell you something? Them. Remember, None remember, remember, remember our assistant, our assistant commissioner Matt Twist, who I believe, I mean, he should be sacked. There's no doubt about it. But he hey, turned we, round, he turned round, and he said that there were no examples whatsoever of anti-Semitism in the Palestine march. And then when later he was proved to be wrong, um, he then said, "Oh, it was because we were so busy dealing with football thugs." Let me tell yeah, you one thing. I'm going to say this to you, Tony. There is a big difference between saying Jews should be murdered and having a few too many pints in the pub, and the fact yeah. that the priority was have, was was beer, people getting beard up at the cenotaph shows how morally bankrupt Matt Twist is. I would love that man's career to end. Put yourself in the police's position that you go to work, you've got a family, and you it's a job, and you want to go home at the end of your shift. You're 4,000 strong up against 100,000 people. Yeah, that's true. And it only takes one of them with a gun. Yeah. To destroy, to destroy you. The, pro the problem, the problem they've got, the problem. Right, you've got four thousand police, maybe against hundred thousand people. Mm -hmm. They know that they have. Well. Is, 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 is this the reason? So, 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 remember what will happen if you attempt to arrest an anti-Semite. They'll all have the camera phones out. It'll all be heavily edited. You will be suspended. Shame. You will be suspended, they will fight you, and then you'll be suspended for racism. Actually, it's the same reason of, I've, I've heard a suggestion that when police officers hear over the radio that there are black gangs knifing each other in Brixton, they don't quite go as fast as they would do <laughs> under, under other circumstances. You've got to factor in the fact that the people they're going to have got knives. Yep. The same reason why you see people turning a blind eye to anti-Semitic anti remarks in London and because they're mob-handed, it's intimidating for the old Bill. I actually empathise with them in a big way. I'm not really a massive fan of the old Bill because I think they, they massively overreach on many other issues. Yeah, but, they do. But when it comes Essex to... Essex police are quite cool, though, aren't they? But if back, yeah. But the reality is, if you misgender somebody on Twitter, you should expect a knock on the door. If you say you want Jews gassed in the streets of London, knock yourself out, it's going to be fine. I think this because you've got... Again, it goes back to the cultural conversation we were having earlier on. If, but there's if, a different if, rule for different people. Yeah. So I effectively... Politically, yeah, but also in is actuality as well. If you, if you offend yes. a Jewish person, they're probably not going to 
attack you physically or mm. or try to murder you. Not saying all Muslims do this, but it is quite prevalent and amongst people that are death. offended in the Muslim oh, community reason, that will come out and be aggressive reason, and threaten you. With, there's with a reason why the Muhammad cartoon from Charlie Hebdo mm. is not shown on British TV screens anymore. It's got nothing to do with it being banned. It's literally because the last people who showed it had their offices machine gunned. Yeah. Well, the, the thing is, I don't, I don't see a problem with offending people. I actually think offence is good. Well, you know the MP for really Tixley and Golders Green's office has burnt down a few days ago. You know about that. I've, I didn't it know that. It was burnt no. down no, to I didn't the know ground. That, no. yeah. Why? Well, because he, he's, um, he represents the Jewish community, they, they, his views on Israel. It was literally burnt to the ground on, I think it was either New Year's Eve or... Um, yeah, it was a few days ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. I will say, though, and this is just a question to you, Tony, um, and, and listen, I am the biggest patriot you can ever ever wish to me i believe also properly in free speech and and listen you you, you might have listened to the program you know i i am an unashamedly a zionist i i myself am jewish um but i will ask just in the interest of balance yes there are absolutely people fellow patriots that wanted to defend the cenotaph for what you know from what we're seeing with all the flares and people climbing up the monuments absolutely but do you not think there maybe was a little element of some people going and maybe wanting to start a bit of trouble? Please. Yes, I worked as a young man in the 70s for the best Jewish firm in the country, a firm called Gestetner's in North London. Mm. They employed 5,000 people, and that was a family. Mm. And Bernie Grant took over having gay council and he had Mrs. Gostetner in, and he said, we're gonna quadruple your business rates. And she said, well, we can't afford to pay that. So he said, well, if you don't, he said, we've been offered free land, 25 acres in Northampton to relocate. And he said, if you don't wanna pay your rates, you better go, and they did. And that put 5,000 people out of work, that was Bernie Grant. That was the starting of it in Haringey, and I worked there. Oh, yeah. I worked there. There was people, they had a row of flats in Hackney that was divided into bedsits, and all the women that had lost their husbands in the war and everything was allowed to live in those flats rent-free, and they were subsidised. They was part of the community. Bernie Grant killed that. And now Khan is saying that all the cars that have been scrapped because of the ULIV, he's talking about sending them to Ukraine. So... <laughs> global, warm, global warming won't happen in Ukraine. No, 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 no cause did you know that? Because the CO two and all of that of doesn't, doesn't understand about borders, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's like COVID, it comes with excuses, you know. Yeah. When you stand up, it doesn't know you're standing up. When you sit down again, it gets you. Oh, yeah. 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 It's, like, it's, like, it's, it's like, it's like, I'm not being funny, but it's like, head lice, like clean hair. Amazing how clean everyone's hair is on the council estate. <laughs> 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 sorry, sorry, that was nasty, wasn't it? <laughs> you're on fire tonight, actually, being nasty. I can balance you up it's with my true. loveliness. It's true, it's true, though, all the parents that were really bad had their children all had clean hair. Because the Knicks used to jump on and go, hey, this is a bit too dirty for me, son. I'm going to bugger off elsewhere. Tony, thank you so much. Mandy is in Barnsley. Mandy, you're on Talk TV. Hi, uh, Happy New Year to everyone. Happy New Year. Happy, happy New Year. Year. Hi. <laughs> I just like to go back to the pensioners. I mean, I think this was the only in the last generation that will ever own anything mm. or stay for yeah. anything. Yeah. And well, Klaus, Klaus Schwab's money. keen on that. Do you know what I mean? You? I mean, and I'm not young. Before anybody says I'm young, I'm pushing 60. You I won't like let me to be say young, young again. Young. No way would I like to be young these days. I am compared to But you know, there's about this sense, sense of entitlement, and you get this, oh, we fought for this country. Well, no, half of you didn't. <laughs> you know, you're not old enough to have fought for this country. Mm. And you've got, I mean, I always think, I mean, I know there's a lot of genuine benefit claimants, but there's also a lot of sponges. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And these young sponges in 40 years will be old sponges and they'll be giving it all we thought. Well, do you know, do you know, do you know, do you know that you eight, know. do you know that eight, 80 percent of uh, first generation immigrants are on benefits? 80 percent, eight zero. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. I mean, my parents were immigrants, but they, when they came over, they Where had did they come somewhere from? to live, a job. You Where know, did they come from? And they worked all their life. Where did they come from, your parents? Uh, my mum was from Austria, my dad was from um, what used to be, Czechoslovakia. Oh, right, well. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and was that was that related to the Holocaust? Um, no, they weren't that old, no. They, um, they, they were around in the war, but no, they weren't. No, they, like, moved countries, and they came here 
had these like they had these like, adverts like come to Britain and and well, they built a life. They built a life. They Britain worked hard. Australia and Charles Britain. <laughs> I mean, that, I mean, that, yeah, I'm not being funny, but but the Gold Coast versus Barnsley. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, came, they went to Oldham because I'm originally well, that, from Oldham. I mean, I mean, wow, well. OK. Oh, oh, in that I mean, case, in that case, they chose Oldham over Melbourne. <laughs> well, if, if you'd have told me that, I would have said they were right. No contest. <laughs> Oh, well, yeah, no, I'm, I'm I mean, screaming. I've been, told, I've been told that I'm not allowed to screech or scream. No. You're oh, not you talk. feel free. It's New Year. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Indeed. I'll tell you what we'll do. Mandy, thank you so much. Let's put David on in Coleraine straight on. Are we able to do Excellent. that with the system? No, we're not able to do that. OK, well, we've got loads of callers coming through, but I can see we do have one available slot um, if you want to phone up now. David in Coleraine, you're on Talk TV. Sure, I'm kind of ringing about here tonight that uh, Labour, you talk about Labour, uh, but nature, nature, why does nature lay service and go to, to Josh, Labour? Josh, you take charge of this call. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, c could you just repeat the question, sorry? <laughs> right, why does nature lay Labour service and go to Labour? I, I, I'm sorry, I can't, I genuinely can't understand, what, what are you trying to say? Right, <laughs> Labour... <laughs> Yeah, no, what about no, Labour? No, 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 I'm a service poor. I put the service. I'm service poor. Labour never get in again. Never knows where no, they get in again. Never. Won't never. Get in again. What, where? But, where mm. won't they get in? Where? They're not, they never get in again. They never well, get in, in again. Well, in the UK, in in England, in England. No, service Labour's funny. Okay. OK, so thank you so much, David. Work. Thank you so much, David. Thank what you, he's David. saying is he thinks Labour's finished. I think Labour are going to win the next election I, by I, a large majority. Yeah, no, I, I don't I, think a large majority. I, I, think, I think we could be heading into hung parliament territory. I think it'd be, sm it'd be a small optimistic. majority. It, it, I know it's optimistic, and it's, it, 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 it's, 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 we'll wait and see how much the Conservative like, vote like, is actually split. When, when it comes to Parliament, do you like someone that's well hung? No, no, Tours, Labour. Not really my bag, mate. It's not his bag. Uh, do you like yeah, any like, people that are well hung? I like a parliament that's well hung. <laughs> oh, do you? Oh, I do. Oh, right. Well, okay. Love a, love a well you get the old jokes in, I'll get the other jokes love, in, love, mate. Love, right? a, love a well hung yeah. parliament. <laughs> okay, anyway, okay, David, right. David and Coleraine, we want to thank you for giving <laughs> thank you. Josh his baptism of fire. Just to explain, jo uh, D David is a very successful farmer in Northern Ireland. He is. But not, right. only, not only is he from Coleraine, but he doesn't spend a lot of time with people. And sometimes in the evenings, he does like to have a couple of beers. Uh, I, yeah. I kind of got that, but yeah. I didn't want to just make any assumptions. And but we love David. Oh, you can assume it's past midnight. They're all drunk at this point. Well, he's making assumptions. That's right and oh, centre. Well. Okay, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna go for an early bath, and we're going to um, we're gonna take more of your calls straight after this. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. We're on your smart speaker as well. Criminals to use the XL bully dogs as weapons to threaten others. No matter how well trained, most dog owners will tell you a dog can turn. Do you know what I love about Talk Today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. I rather like David Cameron. I don't sort of bear him any ill will because he delivered the referendum that he said he would deliver. The Tories love a scrap. You can almost see this coming round the tracks with Suella Braverman. She's heading up one side and Rishi soon at the other. The police are pro-Palestine. That is just not right. You swear an oath in the police to act without fear or favour. The Covid inquiry seems to have turned into a sort of pantomime. There's not really any substance to it. It's hard to know whether it's a farce or a tragedy. For the amount of time it's taken, the number of illegal migrants currently sent by us to Rwanda, zilt. The amount of money it's cost, we're saying, what are we saying it's cost? About 140 million. 140 million pounds so far. So 140 million pounds, so far result, nil, absolutely nil. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google? Where is our unbiased news going to come from? Calais in winter is cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is from the Jeremy Corbyn book. Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on talk TV. Sitting on his fat ass, <laughs> talking for a living. If you're walking towards me and you're a vegan, you should have a great big orange sticker over here saying, watch out, vegans about. The weirdest plank that we've had in what, yeah. three years? Hundreds and hundreds of mice in a box, which he walked into a branch of McDonald's. McMouse Man. McMouse Man, yeah. McMouse Man. He should be easy enough to catch this guy, shouldn't he? I mean, he's got a house full of mice. He's on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
This is a major summit. President Biden decided this was important after watching a Tom Cruise film. Sunak and the current Conservative government are not conservative. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares uh, your ideology? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK party. Hi, I'm Ofcom. Just, just... Kids think all they have to do is take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok. Problem solved. This is really unfair. What's, what, what's unfair? If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm you're, going to, you're going to resign? Yes, because I cannot continue my work. When I say I am God, I'm not joking. Did you feel Elvis was controlling? I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Are What's you prepared you? to call is Hamas a have, terror group? Is it possible to have a rational you can't, can you? I've asked you two questions. Should Hamas stay in power and are they a terror group? You're refusing to answer either of them. They that won't. is very telling. Talk TV, it's the only place where you get the truth. You've done a book on poetry. Poetry and music for the many. I love poetry, we can agree on that. <laughs> Don't ever have a go at me for lack of professionalism because here we are back with Andre Walker and Lois Perry. What's happening, Andre? <laughs> Andre, you took that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I was just talking about somebody that I really like at talk TV. Unfortunately, <laughs> you're never going there. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. He doesn't watch. He only watches the talk. Barbara is on. Barbara is on. Barbara, you're on talk TV. Barbara, come on, Barbara, save us. Hi, Andre. Barbara, can Hi, I tell you something? Barbara, Hi, Barbara, Barbara, I'm, you, Barbara, yeah, Barbara. Hello. Hi, ba darling. Barbara, Hi. I rewatched. I rewatched the show the other night because obviously it's important having the New Year's Eve show and 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 doing some making it better next year. We're going to get some blooming fireworks up on there next year. But anyway, the fact that Alan was able, your husband was had that moment of insight despite his dementia um, oh. yesterday. I think was absolutely amazing, and I'm so pleased for you. Well, I've I've rung today and there's no response. No. It's, it's... But it, uh, it was just a miracle. But, you, but, Barbara, but Barbara, you knew, you knew it that it was a, a one-off. It was that that happened. Yep. You know. He's in there. But mm. anyway, there's something I need to uh, to tell you because oh. this is very important. Well, in the 70s, I was um, a nursery nurse. I was a staff nursery nurse in a, um, a, a day nursery in Warrington. Yes. And... <clears throat> The young people who had to, the young mums who had to go out to work, they really missed the interaction with the children, mm. you know, and by the time they got back, they had to give them a bath and put them to bed. Anyway, I thought of an idea. Instead of working, instead of working mums having to um, pay for, you know, nannies and whatever, they... I think they, there should be some kind of system where... Where, they, where the government pays they, out money like yes, Social Security. Yes, yes. So they can stay at home? But preschool children, only if the, only if they, mm. only if the uh, mums are working, you know, so they can spend some time during the day with their uh, little ones. What about making men's wages high enough for normal jobs? We've got to end the, the slave wage culture. That the what, government no. doesn't have to get involved and the girl can choose if she wants to to well, start Women's home. right to choose. Oh, oh well, yeah, yes, yes, that's a, that's a good idea, Lois. Yes. That's how we've been but, doing things for about thousand, two, three thousand, maybe even mm -hmm. more years. But, yeah. What if they don't? What if they don't have? What if they don't have the father there? Well, you then, know, if, you if, know if, that's sort of their fault, yes, isn't it? If, if, well, yes, not really. Single, what if the father dies? If, oh, well, that's completely like, different. No, that's I, completely I, different. I, 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 I like, no, but I also... I mean, if they're single, if they're single mums... I, I know, no, I know. Look, but you know, society has made it so there's, you know, that that's that be, has become an option. But my, my argument would be, and this is probably I'm going to get killed for this, right? Mm -hmm. My argument would be, you might not get pregnant without a dad if there wasn't a backup system in place. You know, you might be a little bit more careful. Maybe even get married. Oh, I see what you mean. I was going to say, you, no, I, thought no, you, I thought you were disputing no, the need for a man to get married. No, <laughs> no, 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 I just thought, you know, which is what Abst happened until yeah, pretty recently. Abstinence, yes? Is that what you're saying? Or contraception? Well, no, oh, quite. Better choices, <laughs> don't you think? Better choices. Yeah. Turkey-based. 
But the thing is, Lois, what if the relationship breaks down? Mm. And no, no, does. That, that's true, but people did used to make more of an effort to stay together. Look, I'm not, I, yeah. I'm just playing devil's advocate. Oh, no, but the problem, the problem is, the yeah, problem is, you've, yeah, got, to, you've yeah. got to be honest you with you. You've got to be honest, Barbara. You need to be responsible. Yeah. Right, Barbara, yeah. you've got to be yeah. honest, though. When people yeah. say, till death do us part, remember, women dying in childbirth was incredibly common. Men dying in war was incredibly common and mm -hmm. from disease. Actually, till death do us part was often less than 10 years. Yes. Does well, that mean they shouldn't say it then? It, We've had 52, Andre. Oh, well, yeah. there you go. So you yeah. are an inspiration. Different but, generation. But These days, it, it's, you know, swipe left, swipe right, done. It is true, but I do like what Barbara's saying because she's basically saying, you know, that for women to have more of almost a work-life balance with balancing work and also and, and spending a bit more time with their child, children. Mm. I like that. Mm. Yeah, it's good. Oh, only in the preschool years. Mm. You know okay, I mean? Okie dokie, okay. Barbara, Barbara, let's leave it there. And Jane in Manchester apparently is a big fan of mine. Jane, uh, you're on Talk TV. Hi, I love right. him as well. well. Is your mum's name Jane? Hello. My mum's dead. Yeah, his well. mum's dead. Well, well I'm, I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm off. Jane, we can, oh, we can no. hear you, Jane. Yeah. We can hear you, Jane. <sighs> Hello. Jane, gone. Hello. Hello. Are you there? Yes. How come you guys were talking for like two minutes while I was on the line then? Well, all right, love, get on with it. <laughs> yeah, okay, all right, love, get on with it, because you get all the airtime, don't you? But apparently this, this is what Talk TV, right? where we get to talk. OK, go, go for it. Go on. OK, do you want to know my problem with you, Andre? Go on. You're so blasé and don't leave the pensioners alone. They've worked all their lives and paid everything in to the system and get nothing back. Well, they get £150 a week back. Wow. £150 a week after everything they've paid in. Can I tell you about my stepfather? Go on. He worked every day of his life, never took a sick day, used his holiday pay when he got his hands crushed in an industrial accident and lost a toe when he was fighting for this country. And then when he was 84 years old with Parkinson's, was told he didn't qualify for full-time care. So do you want to talk to that pensioner about what well, he's Well, I do, I, I, do, I do actually, but, but, but here's my point. Are you going to turn around and say that they've done everything wrong and now all the young people are being robbed? Well, the young well, people the have been robbed, though, haven't they? Has but, done but Andre, that Andre was being deliberately antagonistic and trying to... to he, he, think, wanted, yeah, he wanted and, that and person and to I defend actually, himself. I we complimented you earlier because you do seem to get it and he does not. Do you understand right. what I'm saying? That is a major problem. Do not that, insult the pensioners, <laughs> OK? Leave the pensioners alone. Look, look leave, please leave Brittany alone. <laughs> <laughs> they, they're old. They're old. They pay everything in all their lives, and you're you're criticising oh, them. Oh come on! The stop moaning. He didn't, he didn't mean it. He didn't yeah, mean it. Yeah, me, I'm moaning. You are moaning. You're moaning. You moaned you you when you came on. You've got worse. My opinion is moaning. Come on, stop moaning. Stop moaning. Who invented the skip? And you're 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 doing what? Who invented the skip? Who invented what? The skip? Who invented the skip? Okay. Oh, wow. So, so let, let, shall we talk so about? Let, let's talk about the solutions. What, what are the solutions? Te tell us what the solutions are. Let's let's let's. We want the you to tell the public. The mothers at home to look after their children. Right. right. Yeah. Absolutely. You agree. We're, we're in agreement with that. Because I mean, what has happened since you took the mothers out of the home? Mental what health de declining. Kids. Fat kids. Out of the home. Yeah. Exactly. You know exactly what I'm saying. You get it. He does not. Yeah. Because he's young. He's got no children. Yeah, hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. He's actually older than me. No, you're old. You're old, you me? see. Wait, wait, yeah, I am older than you, Andre. No, she's yeah, older I'm than me. 40, 49 years old. Yeah, I'm, I'm 35. Older than you. I lived through it. I lived through the ages of when the NF was painted outside my door and that went National Front because I am mixed race mm. and that was when racism was everywhere. Horrendous. I lived through the 70s, the 80s, the 90s and now into now, yeah. So don't tell me. Don't don't try to school me, okay? Leave them. I, I don't believe I schooled you. Children. I think I think you were angry when you first arrived, weren't you? And you've got yeah, angrier still. You know why I'm angry? Because oh. look at what look at us, the state of our country. No, you have every right look to be the angry at the state of the country. country. You're right. But I tell you what, your fault. And, Andre so is an ally. He really is. is. You, it's so funny for you because you you know something. You you are to me. I'm sorry. You're media. You know what media means? Media, witchcraft. 
Yeah, that's, that's what it means to no, me. No, no, I mean, no, to be stop, fair, stop right, 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 right. You stop. can't equate the media industry with an ancient Roman, uh, sorry, an ancient Greek myth. Sorry, you, and I I felt really, I, I hear you, and I and the thing is, all of us here also are angry with the state of our country. Yeah. And yes, we all actually have slightly different ways where we want to make it better, but I'm sorry, you can't equate us to Greek mythology and witchcraft. You can't. Well, you can with Lois. Harvey, Harvey <laughs> is in Lincolnshire. <laughs> Harvey, what have you got to say? What about... <laughs> uh, good evening. <laughs> Hold on, let me finish. A happy and healthy new year, everybody. Now, listen here carefully, Jane. I sympathise with you. We all sympathise with you, but listen carefully. You get yourself to the we seaside. Are and see all the we are no, angry. Jane, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me speak, and then when I've shut up, you speak. The scroungers at the seaside, listen, driving 23-plate cars, they're all pensioners. They know how to play the system. They get to 64 and a half years age. You go to the doctors with a bad back and a bad leg, and they're swanning all over the country with mobility cars. I own them. I'm a taxpayer, Jane. Are you a taxpayer? My father lost his leg up to his groin near his nuts. They gave him nothing. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Does that beat the time? I said, Jane. She's hung up. You speak. Andre, listen to me. You scroungers, get yourselves job. Get out there. If you, I was running the country, let me tell you, you'd be you'd be out there picking the veg and the fruit and the. the you are, your country's a disgrace. I wouldn't give any of you the time of the day. You scroungers, low lifers. You have got no time for you. S tell him what you think. So somebody just said, if I was Tarzan, I'd set him on Jane. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So so Harvey, Harvey, that, that is the character. Thing, Harvey, like tell us, thing. tell us more about the scroungers. Andre, Andre, I've just had a triple R bypass and a pacemaker that can give me a load of money. You better calm down, food. then. All right, I please calm down. down. I love it. I love life to the fullest, especially you lot winding me up. You make me blood boil. But I say to the doctor, I'm only watching talk TV for half an hour, and they say to me, "You're all right. You'll be all right with that lot there." <laughs> <laughs> you lot. You lot that are listening now, you don't work. Get off your asses and do something. You're bringing the country to its knees, you bunch of load of scroungers. Yes! Come on! Come on! Well done, Hart. You're not clapping. I, I, I... I was waiting for more. I thought it was carry on. <laughs> Charlie and I were looking at each other. Yeah. Like, Harvey, what, what Harvey I'll tell you what we're going Where's to do. Encore? Harvey, I'll tell you what we're going to do. It's now at 54 minutes past. We'll give you till 56. Keep talking. Right, Come on. Right, well, you listen. OK, OK. But you don't believe what I'm saying. Just you lot get your coach load to come stead next. Maybe we'll talk to see. Oh, and these pensioners are feel so sorry for them. Yes, I feel sorry for them because they've never got off their arses in the last five, six, ten years. They don't pay for car insurance. They don't pay for servicing. You've got free cars. Nothing wrong with you people that are running around in mobility cars and blue badges. Nothing. I'm against you. I'm dead against you. You give me a label, an authority tag, I'll bring you £10 million a week in every single week for you lot that are defrauding the state. There are some are valid are? blue badge holders. I have, I'm you know yeah, my, been grand, told. my grandfather is one of them. Mm. My father lost his leg to his groin. They gave him nothing. <laughs> nothing. I was 11 years of age. Don't come in with me, you load of scroungers, because I have to work for you. And so does Andre and the bird and them with the two fellas. You <laughs> <laughs> all have to work and pay your taxes. Listen, I'm stinking rich. I don't, I'm not bothered. I'm bothered about the people that are genuinely struggling. You know? <laughs> Harvey, you coming, Andre? Have I got to shut up now? Harvey, Harvey, <laughs> Harvey, the, the award is yours. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. I think it's worth pointing out that uh, Harvey's call was partly for entertainment purposes. <laughs> <laughs> Harvey, thank you so much from Skegness in Lincolnshire, where apparently the elderly have caused some offence <laughs> to local <laughs> residents over the years. Um, so, look, um, New, Year, New Year's resolution, just very quickly, in the final minute, uh, what have you got, Charlie? I started mine before New Year's, but no alcohol, no processed food. And no sex? Oh, loads of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about you? No, no sex, no process. I want to. I want to lose a bit of weight. Okay. And I'm continue talking as much about Harry and Meghan as possible. So, so you have yo, <laughs> you've yo-yo yo dieted over the years, haven't you? Absolutely, I have. I actually, it's bad. I starved myself when I was at university. Okay. Uh, what are you going to do, Lois? You're going to give up drinking with me, aren't you? No zero zero tolerance of tightness in men. Tightness. In and men. they will have zero tolerance of tightness in you. <laughs> yeah. No, that works.
That works in my favour, though. That didn't okay. actually work as a joke. Okay. Right? Okay. I, 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 and, I, and I want to say, I want to say, I want to say, I want to say in the final 30 seconds of this show, thank you so much for tuning in. I've been on from 10 till 1 every night, pretty much, during this period, apart from Christmas Day and Boxing Day. It's been an absolute hoot. Uh, I think I've proved that I'm the best presenter on the station, but uh, but we'll see what happens in terms of promotions in the new year. Come on. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Thank you to all of our team. Thank you especially to Adam and Matt, who've been with us the whole time. Thank you a bit to Richard, and thank you to George, who hasn't been here. More next. We believe it's best to sell your jewellery face to face so we can answer any questions you might have about the items you are selling. Our friendly and expert staff can help make that process really easy. Our customers are often amazed at the price they receive for bits of old and broken jewellery. And it's always a pleasure to hear about their plans for spending all that extra cash. So call down to Gold Reserves Jewellers for a fast and friendly quote. If you need to buy, sell or repair jewellery, visit goldreserves.com. Stop the silence, start the conversation, get in touch. Hi. I had weight loss surgery to enjoy more time with my children. I did it to help improve my type two diabetes. I did it to enjoy long walks and to feel more healthy. I did it to finally enjoy holidays. I did it to be healthy for my family. Tonic Weight Loss Surgery are helping thousands of people nationwide get their lives back. Inquire today for a free consultation.